Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. We are going to be sorting some more cards today. Sit back, grab a chair, grab some cards of your own. Let's sort them together. And we'll just see where the night takes us. I don't know how long this is going to take me, but I will say I actually can't do anything until I've finished sorting these cards because my desk is covered. So it's pretty funny, right? This is the situation I've kind of, you know, put myself in, which is, uh, it's funny. I don't know. That's just funny to me. What's today's topic? So, you know, I got a lot of questions on my Ask Steve. I'm yet to record that. I'll probably will do it on the weekend. But today's topic will be, what would I do if I had to start again? Now, this is a genuine question that I have not thought of that much. I've been asked quite a lot because, you know, it's a daunting question. You know, whatever I say, people might actually do it. So I got to be careful because, you know, I'm not a like, I'm not big by any means, but, you know, there is a few hundred people that it might influence, and I would hate to say the wrong thing, or anything like that. So, let me just uh, get my wrap head wrapped around this question. What would I do to start again? So, the thing is, like, start again, is, does that imply, like, I already have all the current knowledge, or does that imply that I'm brand new, fresh-faced Steve? So, you know, I will just explain what I did when I very first started. That might put a little bit of, um... Context. What I'm doing right now is exactly the same thing I did when I first started. I bought English base set, jungle fossil bulk of old Wizards of the Coast English cards. And then I pretty much sorted them out and listed the singles one by one. And I'm not saying that this is that's what you have to do. And I'm still doing it now with Japanese cards for some reason. But that is pretty much what I did when I very first started. I bought... What Wizards of the Coast collections and saw them out, sold the cards as, as singles for about three or four years. Eventually got more into grading when the margin was like, you know, obviously way worth it to grade a card. That does not belong there. And then I got into selling a little bit of Japanese and then the way too many people did Wizards of the Coast. And I was like just doing more Japanese because like no one was really doing it as much and now i've fallen in love with japanese and i don't really care whether it's better or worse i always tell people i think english cards are better to sell than japanese cards because they sell so much faster especially if you're from the west i think that's pretty easy to understand if you're from the west and you want to sell cards well the cards that are from your country will probably sell but i just like these so much that i'm just happy to do it you know it might not be the most profitable the best use of my time but I'm happy doing it, and that's more important to me than, uh, you know, anything else at this current moment. Maybe in the future it won't be. Maybe I'll, I want to get more money in the future and I'll be doing something else. Oh, it's no rarity. So what would I do if I had to start out again? So first thing, it this just implies you're like a little bit more than a complete beginner. You know what a Pokemon card is. You know what, you know, you've seen my channel maybe. You've seen a few channels. You're a little bit more in the hobby than... An average person would be if that if that makes any sense you're not like completely brand new so uh, this implies you already have a little bit of a collection of your own and you want to become a seller and lots of things there's lots of stipulations with what i'm saying but you know you're not just a complete brand new brand spanking beginner so what would i do i would try to sell as many cheap items as I can, or as you can. That would be my first lot of advice. There is, you, you need to learn what it's like to, you know, work, I guess. Work, and not only work, but like have responsibilities. Be responsible for delivering the person's item. Because, you know, if you want to become a bigger and bigger seller, well, you start dealing with like more and more expensive items and more items in general. And the best way to learn how to deal with more items is to sell as many cheap items as possible. Now, I'm also assuming that you're not rich, you know, because most people that have a high paying job and are rich, they probably wouldn't want to sell Pokemon cards online. Maybe they do want to because they think the grass is greener when it's not, but maybe they do. So first thing we do, we need to establish a base. You need to figure out what you really like, because the, the thing that I believe why I have been, you know, not just successful, but the word consistent. Consistent is a word that you're going to want to put on the wall and you want to read that word like a thousand times a day because you need to be consistent. None of this is fun. None of this is exciting. 
None of this, by its purest form, if you said, hey, can you sort 5,000 of those cards so then you can condition check them and then eventually list them and then do it again and again and again? By definition, that's not fun. We might enjoy it because, you know, we're collectors or maybe there's something a little bit wrong with us, but by whole definition, that's pretty much what a minimum wage job looks like, in my opinion. So the thing is, you need to learn to what the value of your own hard work is and consistency if you are brand new. Because, you know, as you get bigger, you're going to have to deal with more stuff. And if you sell more things, you learn to deal with more things, set more time apart. You realize, hey, I can't just like, you know, wake up. Maybe I work for like six or seven hours because most people, they're young, 20 to 25. You don't have your, like your full-time job because, you know, even some people, they're 25. They don't have their first full-time job. Maybe you're working part-time or you're working somewhere and your job kind of sucks. It It is a, sometimes you wake up. Let's just say you work six, seven, six to eight hours. You get home, you want to play some Fortnite for a few hours. Nothing wrong with that. Then you want to, you know, spend some time with your significant other. Nothing wrong with that. And then you're like, oh, okay, so I watch some Netflix. Okay, well, now I have to, you know, play some games again because, you know, I deserve it because I work my job and all those other things. Those luxuries, you need to kind of, it, they just have to go, like, some something has to give. But there's only so much time. You can't really give up that much sleep. I give up a lot of sleep. I usually work until, you know, four to, it's pretty late at the moment, but I usually work until, you know, three or 4 a.m. most nights. Just not, because it's a mix for me. I really enjoy it. Plus, I'm trying to do something here. I've set aside time and I want a goal to be completed. I, I want to complete these goals. I want to get all these cards up. I want to get all, a certain amount of listings up. I want to do certain things on my YouTube channel. I want to do this. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. There's lots of wants in my life at the moment. So there's a lot of things that need to be done. I would love to sit there and play video games for the whole day. I would fucking love it. And I probably could. I'm at the point in my life where I could probably, hey, you deserve it. But my brain has been conditioned to be incredibly consistent. So I hope I'm making sense by saying all these things. So you, something has to give, you have to try. And it's not just like a complete switch, right? You don't go like, Oh, I play three hours of the games one day and then the next day, okay, I want to be consistent. Steve said I have to be consistent. I need to go to the gym and then when I come home from the gym, I need to list until I fall asleep. No, that's not being consistent. That You're just going to burn out really fast and you're going to be in a worse position. It's like, okay, maybe you do that thing that taking up a lot of your time, that's not really benefiting you. Maybe like even watching this video, I really hope if you're watching me, like I hope you're not watching me. I don't even know why I have my webcam on for this. Because I shouldn't. It encourages people to watch. You shouldn't be watching. You should be doing something while watching this. Now, I'm not going to be like, you should be doing this. You should be doing that and try to tell you what to do. But like in general, you should be doing a little bit of housework, catching up on some cleaning, catching up on this, catching up on that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you always have some stuff to do. Not everyone that watches is a card seller. So I'm not always going to use it as a reference, but like doing something consistent where you can listen in the background. Usually if I was doing this, I would have something on in the background as well, but I can't put anything on in the background because I am the background in this case. This guy drawing this polywag up, look at that. <laughs> That's just so funny. Okay. Um, where was he? So where was I? So consistency, this word needs to be like written down because, you know, let's say, you know, a lot of people are like, Steve, I feel like I've wasted my time. I've wasted my life. I'm too late to sell this. I'm too late to start a YouTube channel. I mean, Everyone that says, I've seen a few people say that, oh, it's too late for me to start a YouTube channel. No one's going to watch me. I thought the same thing. I started my YouTube channel in 2021. I made little crappy one minute videos. And we will get to the topic at hand, you know, the whole like what I would do. But we need to lay a groundwork of like how, what consistency means and how it can be beneficial. So, you know, I started my channel in 2021. I made crappy little one minute videos. I stopped doing it because I thought it was cringe. I thought, oh, this is not worth it. Or no, I don't really like that. Or I don't, you know, I don't, it, that's not who I want to be or whatever. For some reason, I thought that I almost put these Totodiles in the, in the bulk pile, but this is a gold star Totodile promo. There's two of these. So this one to the right is not a gold star Totodile promo, if you can see that. But down the bottom here has some text. And that's like World Hobby Fair. 
and this is like another promo from 2000 but it's like the gold stamp this is around like 70 dollars in like played condition this one's around like maybe 20 to 30 a lot more than a normal neo genesis totodile just to say that so you know i started my youtube channel and then i stopped and i started again for a little bit and i moved in between houses i kind of got caught up but then around what like november 2022 i really started to be consistent you know i wasn't monetized there was no real gain for me i just started to show up all the stuff that i'm doing everything i'm going on and it's not even my videos these days the videos that have the most views have nothing to do with like me getting a lot of cards in the mail or me getting you know opening a really expensive box or me doing this or me doing that anything that revolves having money it's just me being me and i'm sure if you want to start a channel or start a business or something it's all about you being you so let's talk about that for a second you being you i wish personally i started a lot earlier with the youtube channel i wish i started in 2016. who knows where i would have been or how much different my life would be right now if i was doing this because the gains and like the benefits i've had from this channel not only monetarily, like the monetarily, like the the monetary, the money benefits. I'm just going to say that the, the money. I think it's monetary benefits from this channel have been pretty good for me. I'll just say it. Um, I think around sixteen hundred dollars is how much I've earned this year. It's a lot of money. It's nothing to scoff at. It's extra money. I put a lot of time into it. Yeah, I, I was putting out almost a video every day for about five months. I have like 300 videos or something. I've, I've done a lot of videos. <laughs> Trust me, I'm sure you guys know that by now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wish I just started a whole bunch earlier because the earlier you start, is the better you can get, the faster. No one gets really good at anything overnight. It just takes time. I learned how to edit a few videos and now I have a few edited videos that did pretty well. And I'll probably like, I never thought anyone would like to watch my edited videos. Because why? I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a popular guy. But I made a few videos. I, my fucking video I put out today, it's like 10 hours. It got 10,000 views. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Like, what even is that? What even? I never would have thought myself, just me as Steve, someone would do that. But yeah, that's just crazy. I wish I would have started a whole bunch earlier. And that is that is the key. So, you know, tips that I would give to people who, what I would do if I had to start again. Well, you know, without my knowledge, with my knowledge, who cares? This is what I think the average person should do. Let's say you have a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars. You need to learn the value of time and spending time making listings and making everything perfect because most of your sales are just going to be from selling a lot of things and doing a lot of things. You're not going to be able to take advantage of, you know, buying a lot of a new card and grading it because that's going to be expensive for you. You could probably do a little bit of that. You're not going to be able to take advantage of, you know, buying hundreds of boxes and then sitting on like, 50 of them and selling 50 of them you're not going to do that because that's expensive and everyone else is doing it you're just going to learn how to carve out your own niche do something that you actually enjoy like i enjoy sorting through cards to list as singles i've enjoyed it for a very very long time and i don't know when i will stop enjoying it maybe next year i'll be like okay this is not worth it i'm selling this card for a dollar my time's worth more than that maybe i'll think that eventually not not today definitely not today because i got to sort all these singles but need to carve out your niche plus you can't have something so niche and so like how do i explain this? you can't have something so niche and so sheltered or like not seen that the traffic is not very high like it's, that's why like that's why pokemon's so amazing it's because the items actually sell quite fast quite a lot it's not like a you know you might sell one every three months kind of thing it's it, it, they you can sell a lot of different pokemon items because it's very popular so when i say carving out your niche i'm not talking like i don't know i can't think of anything that's like way too niche inside pokemon but like i'm sure you know if it's just something like if you want to be i don't know like i'm getting a lot into plush and plush is pretty niche it doesn't sell that fast it has like a really high retail price i guess there's no way to like discern value because it comes out at a retail price there are like rarer plush from back in the day that are worth more now. So if you are like really good at that, but if you are, if you really like the plush and you go all in, I do think you'll be able to get something out of it. I don't think they sell fast enough personally to make it the main thing. That's why cards is so good. But if you're doing cards, 
maybe stick to just getting like old Japanese cards for your very first start out, if you like that. If you're doing, maybe or stick to only doing newer modern cards. Modern cards are great. The margins are really bad, but that's because everyone's doing it. But that's what you should expect. You shouldn't expect to be able to make money off something easy. I'll use the classic collection, you know, to kind of like, for example, I bought, I think, eight classic collections in total. I wanted to get more, but, you know, the prices were going all over the place. I couldn't find the boxes without... I couldn't find just the cards for a while there, and it's whatever. And then when I finally got them in hand, they were... Like, I had some that were pretty gradable, but I didn't want to, like, take the risk or be a part of that whole grading rush again with yet another product. So I, um, you know, the classic collection... I spent $5,700 on eight sets, roughly $700 per set, a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit more adjusted just for like the story's sake. It might be a little bit less because my last few sets that I bought are around like $450, $500 each, but that's not relevant. So, and just today, after selling 600 and well, 560 singles out of the classic collection, I had a look at the metrics. I received $5,600 back from eBay fees. So I think two weeks after I listed my first classic cards, I think it was two weeks ago, I've finally broken even. And now I think I have another 1,100 classic cards to sell. And, you know, when people ask me, what, would, what should I do, Steve? What should I do to, like, you know, start this? So first thing, you should be working a job so you can get paid. You don't have to worry about your bills, all that stuff sorted. Plus you have extra money to buy stuff, but you should be obsessed with selling cheaper stuff and building value. If that makes sense. And now I'm not saying you should just copy me because what I'm doing isn't really the most optimal thing, to be honest. It's just something I enjoy. And I'm not just telling you it's the most optimal thing because I'm doing it. I really don't care. You know, some people ask me, Steve, you worry about competition? No, not really. I actually enjoy it when people, you know, start doing it because of me, because they compete with my competition. And that's pretty funny. So I'm sorry to those guys out there, already existing sellers. Uh, they kind of hate me doing this, but it is what it is. So find something that you really like. And then when you become sort of like an expert in it, that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to reference. You want to be an expert. So you know the prices of all the stuff that you want to try and buy and sell. So when you see it for sale, you can take advantage of it and then buy it and then try and on-sell it, build some value. You know, buy one from somewhere, secondary market somewhere, and then sell it onto eBay. Buy one, sell it onto eBay, and then try and buy two and sell it onto eBay. So if I was first starting, I would be obsessed with building value and trying to get as many cards as possible. And even there, like, guys, when I say, like, when I say this, I know people who literally buy bulk lots of like $1 cards. And I'm not $1, sorry. I know people that buy English modern bulk. So I'm just talking about commons and uncommons and rares, I guess. I know a guy on eBay and a friend for a very long time. All he does is just buy off bulk sellers who he knows that don't strip any value out of the bulk. They just mass open or they buy bulk and then, you know, on sell it or something like that. He buys it for like $20 or something per thousand. And that's really high, I think, at the moment, maybe a little bit low. I'm not 100% sure of the numbers. We, we haven't talked about it for a while. And then all he does is just sort the cards and then he just makes good looking listings that are just easy to buy from. That's it. He has variation listings and he has all his star you cards in one variation, all his Omanite cards in one variation. He just makes it really easy to for people to buy cards off him. There's all there's a there's a store on eBay. I don't know. I forgot the name. I was looking at it the other day and I was like, wow, that's amazing. The store is called the Sleeve Queen. So I think they're they're on the UK eBay. Go have a look at that. That person sells sleeves for 99 cents. They have hundreds of different sleeve listings, variation listings. They've put so much effort and work in. They have like 20,000 sales in their store. It's incredible. And all they do is sell sleeves. And But all they do is they buy a pack of sleeves. They open it up, sell it individually for more than the whole pack. So every time they sell, maybe they buy 60 sleeves. By the time they sell 30, the other 30 is free. They get their money back and they buy some more sleeves. It's all about building value and staying consistent doing what you're doing. And you have to enjoy it a little bit. 
That's the, that's the worst part. You know, so I get, there's a lot of messages. I, I see a lot of like the same sort of themes. Just saying, you know, I would love to, but I don't know what to buy to sell. And it's just like, it's not about buying and selling. It's about like buying stuff you really like. Like old Jap... This is the very first Pokemon cards that ever released. Maybe not the first Pokemon items, you know, card ass and stuff. But like, this is the very first Pokemon cards. I'm touching them right now in mass. They're awesome. And I'm, a, I'm in a privileged position. Incredibly privileged. Pri blah, 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 <laughs> incredibly privileged. Like, it's not... I can't even understate how privileged I am in this current position to be selling singles like the way I do. And it doesn't really bother me whether they sell or not because I know they'll sell eventually because it's all Pokemon cards and Pokemon's incredible. And so I'm happy to put the work in. I'll get the reward eventually. I mean, it's not a big deal. But it's like... You know, they, they, I know a guy that he sells, and they, he sells bulk for a dollar to two dollars. He doesn't make much, maybe 30 cents, 40 cents per card. Well, that adds up. People buy five cards, it suddenly becomes a little bit more profitable. People buy this, people buy that. And then, when I said earlier, well, I know we're like 20 minutes in before I started talking about this, but what I said earlier about like starting with lots of listings and cheaper stuff you can learn how to manage, the moment you start hitting a threshold. Like, I know what people want. I started selling plush. I did a huge plunge. I listed like 300 Pokemon fits. I know which ones sold straight away. I know which ones had high demand. I know who messaged me for more afterwards. Hey, you want to get this? Hey, I want to get this plush. Hey, I want this plush. Now, beforehand, I, I would have been in the same boat as anyone else. Oh man, I wish I knew, like, I, I wish I knew how to sell plush. Or I wish I knew which ones were popular. Sometimes you just have to take the plunge and learn for yourself. Yes, it's easier for me because I have more money. I completely understand that. But I've also taken the risk a hundred times over and that's why I'm in this position. So now that I learn, hey, I know these plush are popular. I know that plush is popular. I've sold a bunch of poncho plushes. Now I know which ones are those sold and who's looking for more of them. I can connect the dots because I put the effort in. That's what all it's about. And now I've sold a few plush. Like the ones I sell on my store, every time I sell eight plush, or seven plush, every time I sell seven Pokemon fits, the ones that are behind me, I get one for free. It's kind of like a reverse buy one, get from, get one free from buying coffees. <laughs> that makes any sense. You know, when you buy coffee or I don't, I don't drink coffee, but people go to those coffee stores, they give you like a voucher and they like click on it or they, they click the thing on it and they get a coffee. You guys know what I mean? It's kind of like, I'm like that in reverse. So. It's, it's all about building value when you first start. Just understand that. The goal is never to make money. Okay, the goal is never to make money. I know I might show off a lot of sales stuff, but it's cringe. And I, I honestly hate it. You kind of have to if you want to get like noticed on YouTube and stuff like that. And people like ca capture people. Oh, this guy actually is real. Because I don't know how many times people have written me off as like, oh, that guy's a Pokemon card seller. You know, it's just Pokemon cards. Oh, do you do okay with that? It's like, oh, you what? You sold two hundred fifty thousand dollars in like one month before? Oh crap! You sold one item for like a hundred and ten thousand dollars? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a big industry. Maybe you might not know, or maybe you do know. And I'm not trying to flex or anything, but it's like this is a big deal industry, and you can make you know you can make a lot of money out of it, but you can also build way more value. I know a lot of people who. They get lucky, maybe they get some good grades, they sell their cards, they go waste all the money on something, and then they're square one again. Because they're like, okay, I got lucky, and that's it. And, you know, getting lucky sometimes can be a curse, because it teaches you bad habits. But, I believe, to me, so this isn't the perfect way to how someone should start, you know, getting into cards and selling them, or starting a store. This is just my advice. It's It's not like this is the one true way. I'm sure someone else out there would have a completely different explanation. This is just my explanation. And I'm probably going to use, you know, the way I did it as how I would do it again. A few things a lot different to what they used to be like. For example, you don't have to learn all the intricacies of eBay and listings and doing photos and stuff like that. All the information's there. All you got to do is put the time in. You know, you got someone like me who's willing to help you out a little bit and fix, like help you learn how to, you know, do all your listings and stuff like that. You, can you guys see what I'm doing? Oh, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, it does. It's 
I can't explain the, the levels of difference. Plus, back when I first started, cards didn't really sell. Like, you know, I had a big break from the 20th anniversary. I was selling only Wizards of the Coast cards. And I remember my sales would be like $50 a day. It wasn't that much. You know, I sell a few cards and then I buy a few more cards. Cards were way cheaper. You could get more for less, but you know, they wouldn't sell for much and they wouldn't sell that often. But now, uh, that's a lot different. When 2016, 20th anniversary came along, that was a big deal. That was crazy. I was selling like $400, $500 someday and it was honestly nuts. I'd never seen anything like it. I remember driving to work and the eBay notification, someone would buy like a hundred singles off eBay and it, it would go crazy for me. Like it'd be like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'd be driving to work, man, in my crappy car. And I'd just be like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's so funny. But it's just by exposing myself to more items, exposing myself to you know more things. Cause it probably was honestly so crazy how different everything is like, so yeah, it's just, yeah. So my advice, step one, carve out a niche. Whatever you want to do, carve out a niche. Just pick something and stick to it. And it has to be something you enjoy, you know? It can't be something that you see someone else enjoy. Because the problem is, if you just like copy someone else, you're always going to be behind them. So, you know, there's a lot of people that try to copy my current stores. That's perfectly fine. But you're always going to be behind me. And if you undercut me, it's not a big deal. It's it's really not. It doesn't bother me. You probably sell and then I'll just be the cheapest price after you. And then I'll make more on the cards and you try to undercut and it's not a big deal. It's just whatever. And there's also like other things that can happen. And yeah. And people try to copy the exact way I do my variation listings and everything like that. That's perfectly fine. You know, they try to copy my stores, the way I do my logos, the way I do everything. That's 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 perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, those same people are still in my DMs, like, begging for advice. And if I notice you, like, copying me everything to a T, well, I mean, it's not great because I want you to, like, come up with your own things. And I will probably will help those people a little bit less, but I'll still help them. It's not a big deal. What am I doing here? Tentacle. There's no tentacle. So, carve out your own niche, figure out how the way you want to do everything, and then find stuff that you actually really like that you want to sell cards are really good so you know first thing you can do this card's so damaged is wait i just got to think for a second before i uh, go crazy into this topic i hope you guys are enjoying these videos of me sorting i'm struggling it's actually really hard to sort and talk at the same time i, I wish oh my god that's just the three thousand people watched other video that's nuts that's nuts for me that's big for me i was going through some of my early videos today clicking and see like you know 300 views 400 views and uh, different times man the views don't really change the quality of the videos to be honest uh because i'm just making the same stuff but hey it's good to see it people want to listen that's not a big deal um i like it if you need help just feel free to message the, the replies might be a little bit delayed because there's i've never seen so many comments in my life but i'm getting to them i'm trying my best so yeah so when we when i say about carving out a niche i'll give some examples Let's say you're a water Pokemon master. You love water Pokemon. You like because me per personally, me I love Pikachu's. I'll explain a little bit of a niche that I carved out when I first started, when I took advantage of something. But the niches could be water Pokemon, or you could sell, you know, only old cards, only new cards. I talked a little bit about earlier. It's just like you got to do what you really like. Otherwise, you're not going to get excited because the, the difference between me and someone else who's just trying to look for making money. I look, I get excitement. I'm like a gambler. I get like a gambler's high. I buy something. I'm like a gambler. I dice, I, you know, I grade something as a gambler. I, the, the excitement level for me is like, I, my brain is always thinking about this because it's not just like a job to me. It's like a legitimate obsession with the items, with the selling, with everything put together. But you have, you have to have that for your own thing. You're not going to have it for like maybe old Japanese cards because you're just not interested in them. And that's perfectly fine. But with the thing that you like, you might have that. So like, you know, when I first really started to pick up is when I... Sorry, I'm going to take a drink of water now. Hmm. 
back in the day, I would sell a lot of Wizards of the Coast promos, English promos from the Wonder 53 Black Star promo set. Because there was a lot of people on, you know, Facebook, even Craigslist. I had friends in America that I would like message to be like, yo, can you message this person on Craigslist to see if they would ship all this other stuff. I got scammed a few times just from like sending people money and they never sent me the items. It is what it is. That's the risks. <laughs> but, you know, Black Star promos, I noticed where I'm from, there wasn't many people selling them. I just went crazy. There, there was one deal I had from New Zealand and these... These deals, they'll happen today, they'll happen tomorrow. I'm still getting deals to this day. Deals upon deals upon deals. Deals don't just go away. They always, the deal moving block goes upwards and they might be harder to find and they might become more expensive. But the items are easier to sell and the items sell faster and they are items individually are more expensive. So it just it's just like the you know, the, the deal block moves along. But, you know, this one deal I got from New Zealand. And here's what I did. There was a seller on eBay who had, like, 50 of these Misdreavous promos up. Black Star Misdreavous promo. It was, like, number 37 or something. I can't remember. And what I did was, like, hey, do you have any other promos? Because usually if someone had 50 of a promo, they might have something else. He's like, hey, man, yeah, I'm just uh, going through some old inventory from a store I used to host. You know, I used to, I used to own a long time ago. And then, and then we went... We exchanged email addresses on eBay. Don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. But, uh, you know, that happened. And then I he emailed me. I emailed him. He had 7,000 Black Star promos. And I'm sure I have the photos somewhere. Maybe I'll show them off one day. But 7,000. He had like 827 Surfing Pikachus. He had like 600 Snap Promo Pikachus, number 26. It, it was a genuine a lot. Like, when it came to promos, there was a lot of people all over the world. English Wizards of the Coast promos, there were so many of them given out in mass amounts at all these events. And this was 2017, I think. I think, yeah, 2017, somewhere around there. And, you know, he, he sold them all to me for, like, 10 cents each. And it was, like, $890 plus shipping. Because, you know, no one really wanted them. The Mischievous promo, you know, I ended up just, like, giving them away eventually, I think. But I had, like, 560 of them. I had a listing on eBay, like $3 sale price. I was selling them for $3 and I had like 200 sold or something like that. It, there's a lot of like details and stuff that I'm like trying to remember. My memory's not that great, but like sometimes going that extra mile, asking an extra question to someone that you have something that you're interested in, you never know. If you're interested in something, there's a chance that someone else is interested. I've always been obsessed with those English Black Star promos. So I just went, I just used to just spam every single person I saw. They had the same things because I was just like, I'm interested in these. Maybe that person has something I'm interested in. Maybe they have more. And on average, they did have more and it paid off big time. In that case, it also happened other times with other sellers. And I'm sure now if I was to buy more English stuff off eBay from the West, from US, Australia, UK, all these other places, I would be able to go back to exactly doing what I used to do. I'm sure it'd be way more competitive, but... I think played singles and damaged singles and all this stuff. People love that stuff. Filling out binders and whatever. It's uh, pretty good, to be honest. I, I love selling singles. I'm not saying you have to go sell singles. Doing the listings, I know it's hard. It's not easy. None of this is... Uh, well, it is easy, but it's time. It's time. It's a lot of time. Okay, now we're back on topic. 33 minutes. I can't just give you the... The answer to the question in the first five minutes. I got to drag the video out, right? Um, <laughs> uh, what is wrong with me? So there's... So then, once you've carved out your niche and you start to get into it, you start, you know, maybe you're not selling a lot of things, but you're listing a lot of things. You're listing a lot and you're like, you know, getting into it. Maybe you haven't sold a lot yet because, you know, being a new seller, selling is a lot harder than it seems. You know, things don't just sell for profit constantly every time. And if they do, it usually fixes itself and everyone jumps in within, you know, within a few weeks, months, because this is a very fast moving paced thing. It's kind of crazy. That's why I say stick to your niche, just so when things are fast and everything's moving, you don't constantly have your hand on the wheel. Like right now I'm selling Japanese sealed products a little bit and I'm selling the you know, graded cards, single cards, plushes. I'm trying to get all these little like random little merch things. You know, I'm, I am trying to buy, like, you know, bulk 
ultra rares from English for like in, to sell in other ways. And then I'm, I'm being like stretched thin. And now I'm becoming like less of an expert in like certain areas. And it probably is detrimental to me. But eventually I'll probably cut a few things out if I don't see them working with the amount of time that I'm putting into them. And then I'll go back to doing, you know, what really works. But, you know, you got to at least build habits and like put time aside and set your schedule and understand that this isn't an instant thing. It's not overnight, but like it, it's, it's the same as going to the gym, like building an eBay store is the same as going to the gym or playing a brand new video game. Like any, maybe that's more like, I don't know, more of a, a better metaphor or whatever I'm talking about. I don't know the word, but it, it's just, when you think about it, like, you know, I go to, if I went to the gym and I was like, man, I wish I was a bigger eBay seller. And it's just like, some people have it easier in life, you know, but when it comes to the gym, there's two things, you know, eating right and working out. It's incredibly simple, right? Like when you think about it, it's like, yeah, that's simple. Any like, you know, if you want to get bigger, eat right and work out okay well if that simple every single person in the world would be completely jacked or looking like the best person in the in the world but it's not that simple and on average most people look pretty crappy me included because it's just is what it is so same thing is coming to like building a big collection on value it takes a lot of small things over time every single day consistently working at it it's not i don't know anyone in this world and some people you know let's just say in the gym world maybe they're born with better genetics you know maybe they have a better start because their parents are more focused on health and fitness and maybe yours weren't and you you know became a little bit of a chubby kid and because your parents didn't care and their parents send them to gymnastics every night something like that i don't know and maybe that sucks not everyone has the same start just like in someone if they were buying a collection they had like a really high paying job because they'll be able to go to universities. Everyone has, some people have huge leg ups and that's just the world we live in. And, but you can't fault people for helping their children and all this other stuff. That's just the way it is, unfortunately, for people that don't get a leg up. So, so when, but like the thing is like the work put in is the only thing that you can change. You can't change your genetics. You can't change how much money you have just by clicking your finger. You know, it's, it's just the world we live in. Unfortunately, some people get it worse off. And if you are one of those person, people, you will struggle. You will struggle way more because of it, but it's not impossible. You know, I'm a spitting image of it's not impossible. I'm not going to say I had the hardest life in the world when I was like growing up, but I do know that when I was like, you know, 17, 18, I had negative a thousand to my name. And I had a shitty supermarket job. I'm 30 now. It's a long time ago. I think it's a long time ago. But like, honestly, 12 years goes by pretty fast, in my opinion. And before you know it, you'll probably be up there with me. Or maybe even past 40, 50. So the only thing I know is for about seven years straight, I have stayed consistent. And I can reap the rewards from it. You know, no, no out of help. And when I, when people are like, what would you do? Start again. That's the number one thing, man. You just stay consistent. Honestly, no amount of good deals or good grades or like, where's my tentacruel pile? Did I do something to it? Sorry. Where's my tentacruels? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. The only thing I can say that has given me the most success is staying consistent and trying not to waste money in my personal life. That's it. You know. Oh, there's my tentacles. Cold dust. I'm not trying to give you a life lesson or like anything like that, but like what would I do? Most of the things I would do don't even have anything to do with Pokemon when it comes to like starting a store and, you know, building value and everything like that. Pokemon's like the last of your worries, like fixing your life, making sure you're not wasting time. Yeah, if you're playing video games, that's great. Play them a little bit less. Yeah, if you're, you know, doing drugs or smoking weed or whatever you want to do, perfectly fine. Your body, your choice, you can do whatever the hell you want. I already sorted fossil. Oh no, what did I do? I'll fix that later. Oh man.
doing this while doing a video is a bad idea. So, um, it's, yeah, you, you, you have to just learn to cut some things back. If you can sit there, if you get up in the morning, you sit there and you think to yourself, I, I've thought this like a lot recently, not recently, in the past like year, you know, from time to time, I'll catch myself thinking and I'll be like, what am I doing right now? That is stupid. And it's like, yeah, like, you know, I'm not going to give any like, you know, personal experiences from it because I don't want to, if something stupid for me might not be stupid for you, it just depends. But if you can sit there and think to yourself, what am I doing? That's stupid. And then you can, you know, as an adult realize, okay, that is stupid. I'm going to try and fix that. There doesn't have to be an instant change. You don't just quit things and go cold turkey. Otherwise you're going to suck. It, it's going to suck and it's going to be way worse. It's, um, yeah, I mean, I know this was like what I would do in Pokemon cards differently. It's what I would do if I started again, but yeah, I would pretty much fix my life as fast as possible for sure. That's like the number one thing. Then I would get everything set up so I would never have to try and change something ever again. I would make sure all my, you know, eBay things set up. I would look for as much help on that front. I would look for, like, I would set up all social medias. I would start a YouTube channel. Even if you get 10 views, even if you get zero views, views aren't the reason why you start the channel. The channel will make you consistent. I know you might think you're wasting time, but trust me, I'll give an example. The Yu-Gi-Oh! PSA return videos I did. I put up, I've done three now. They don't get any views. No one wants to watch old Yu-Gi-Oh! card returns. That's perfectly fine. I'm not interested in that stuff too much either. I mean, I have watched a few to learn the sets and stuff, but I don't blame people that regularly watch more my other stuff that don't watch those. But, you know, like, look, this is something I'm interested in. I like the old Yu-Gi-Oh cards and I'm going to put it up. I'm doing it for me. It's a YouTube channel for me. This is my YouTube channel. So I did it. Someone bought eight of my old Yu-Gi-Oh cards just from that video. Well, my last video that I put 300, it has 300 views. Or however many it has. I don't really know. But does that make sense? Like they bought eight cards for $150 each. So that video, just because I saw it on YouTube and the guy messaged me, oh, hey, I saw this on YouTube. I love these old Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I bought some of my favorites. I didn't even realize that like people graded them. It's like he wasn't looking on eBay for it because it's not a very popular thing. Not many people have those cards. And, you know, he might be even listening to this now. So thank you very much. And those eight cards was around, he had a discount or something. It was around like a thousand dollars or something like that. And it's crazy. I mean, like per card, my margin on those cards is quite a lot. But overall on the total collection and the grading, it's not like I haven't quite hit break even or probably never will. But it's something that I want to do and learn more on. But like, you got to realize that sometimes things might actually work out. All you have to do is stay consistent. You don't deserve, like, no one deserves to have anyone watch their videos. No one deserves to have anyone to give them any advice. No one deserves to have anyone do anything for them. But if you just do things for yourself, things might actually work out in your favor just because you're doing them. Like, I really hope that makes sense. I'm trying to harp on this, like, consistency thing. And you guys, well, you, you, Steve's trying to be a life coach. I'm not trying to be a life coach. I'm just trying to make sure people don't make the same mistakes I made Time and time and time again until I finally went, okay, let's fix this shit once and for all. And then I just skyrocketed because the moment I just dropped all the stuff that was wasting my time, dropped all the people that were wasting my time. Yeah, this, the, I can't even explain like the level of like how many level ups I had after I just dropped all this crap. So all right, firstly, so you got your niche and now you've learned to be consistent. All right, that's great. Now we start learning. So, you know, you can list cheap stuff, one, two, five dollars, ten dollars. You can understand that. You know, you've understood how the margins are made and you physically see it being made. You know, you buy something for a dollar, you sell it for three. After fees shipping, you make like 89 cents or all this crap. You've learned all this stuff. Very important business skills to make. You know, you're posting on your Instagram, you're posting on a YouTube channel. I know it takes a lot of time. Trust me, as someone who does it, I know it takes a lot of time. It sucks. 
but I love posting on my Instagram channel. I don't care if I post a stupid photo of my cats and someone gets like, it only gets 10 likes. I don't give a shit. I don't care how many followers my Instagram account has. It's a great place for people to see where I am. They also go to my Instagram channel. They realize I'm a real human being. That's just a guy that sells cards. They can connect with me with that way. And I can benefit from it. You know, I'm not doing the channel to benefit, but I do benefit from it because the channel, like it's tied to what I'm doing. I hope that's like an understood metric. There we go. No one goes there. New destiny. And no one goes there. Doing pretty good. I'm doing base here now. So the next step is going to be figuring out how to get more out of your time. A lot of people think, okay, Steve, I need to, I need to be good at this. I need to be good at that. I need, I need to get more sales so I can quit my job. You shouldn't want to quit your job, honestly. It's, I will tell you right now, selling cards full time is terrible because you're consistently in a tug of war with value. Every time I rent, like, well, not rent, every time my mortgage, bills, electricity bill, internet bill, phone bills, everything, every time that comes out, it's losing value because I need to use the items to make money. And then every time I sell some stuff, it fills the count back up and it's kind of like a tug of war that way. So it's like, it's a really uh, terrible thing to have to not deal with, but like, it's just, I can see myself honestly going back to work maybe next year because I am sick and tired of losing value. To be honest, like I, I hate the fact that I lose like, you know, fifteen hundred dollars of value every week to, to bills and everything that's like building up in the world and the world's going to shit. And I would I really just love to not lose value constantly. Because <laughs> if I stop listing items and I stop trying to sell, find deals, everything, I'm just gonna slowly lose value over time. The stuff doesn't go up that fast, and it probably won't a lot of stuff probably won't go up over time over the next few years because of all the rates and everything. I don't know hundred percent, that's not speculation, calm down. But yeah, so it's a, uh, it's one of those things where you shouldn't aim to do this to quit your job. I just did it because I just took a leap of faith. It worked out for me the second time, but even now, three or four years later, from what I've learned, how good I am at this, I could definitely still do this while while working. It doesn't have to be a big job. I can just go get a part time job somewhere, you know, whatever per hour. I don't care what it is. Maybe maybe learn another skill. You know, I feel like I've probably learned everything that needs to be learned. Well, I'm trying to be a better video maker. So maybe that's another skill I can learn. But it's a... Uh, the aim should not be to quit the job. The aim is to gain as much value as possible. Because, you know, more value equals what? More money? Let's be obvious. Let, let, not only obvious. Let's be honest with ourselves. More money is the main goal for pretty much everyone. For me, whenever I say value, yeah, that's definitely my goal. But, like, the more cards I get, eventually... When you stop selling, or you still, when you stop buying as much, then you can start selling those pretty much over time slowly, and it lessens the burden of needing to work as much. I feel like that's pretty obvious to most people. But I'm also kind of insane, and I just want as much money as possible. Sorry, as much cards as possible. I said money. But money and cards are pretty much the same. Whatever, you know what I mean. I want to have the most overall value going into every next day, every next month, every next year. Because it's just an insane feeling that I get. There's no certain figure that I want to hit. There's no nothing that I want to hit. I just want to keep doing this. I want to get like 2,000 base set Squirtles Japanese. I want to get 2,000. I want to have like, you know, 500 plus of every card. But like, it's kind of scary to like go out and just buy 2,000 base set Squirtles or 2,000 base set War Turtles or 2,000 Dark War Turtles like I have here. And I've already sorted the Team Rocket cards because I don't know how well they sell. You know, I have a general idea, but we need to see. It's not going to be worth it to me to buy these as value if they don't really, like, slowly trend up in value or become more desirable because, you know, whatever. It's a lot of words I'm saying right now. My brain is kind of losing its mind. I'm sorting like a madman. So, I love these base set cards. They're so good. Base set's a great set, to be honest. It's A lot of people are like, oh, base set. It's a good set. It's a good set, man. So, like, when, when we're talking about all this stuff, staying positive, whatever, you need to upskill in your life as well. That's another important thing 
about being, you know, how would I start an eBay store? Well, you know, the idea is you're starting a store so you can sell your stuff, get better at what you do and gain some value. That's step one. And then once you've reached, you know, step one, you get into step two, well, you're using the store to help you save time in your life. For example, let's say, you know, you love cooking and I have this thing called the Thermomix. I'm not sure if you know what it is, but the Thermomix, it really helps slim down the cooking time. So you want to use the money on things to help you save time. You know, anything you can think of help you save time. Anything you can think of that greatly benefits your quality of life, get it. If you want to get an automatic vacuum because you have five cats, definitely uh, get one of those. <laughs> it's hot in my office tonight, that's for sure. So you want to you want to leverage everything you do against each other. You want to like, you know, stay in your job so you can help yourself build more value in your cards or in your store, on your plush, anything you're selling. And then you want to use the store. Be like, hey, this store is pretty good. Maybe I don't buy for a week. I have a little bit extra money. I want to get this for my car. And now my car does this and this is better in this way. It's kind of like a, it's a big, it's a big tipping, tipping seesaw kind of thing. You like balance both. So like both of them can get a benefit. And you will notice when you start becoming good at something. So let's say you've sold things for like six months. You'll notice it. Like it, it's a feeling. Everyone that I've talked to has felt it before. And everyone that hasn't been talked to about it knows the feeling and they don't know that they've felt it. Start selling something. Maybe you start gaining some value. Maybe you start gaining some money. You'd be like, hey, I actually did this. Like I did this. Like you did it. Like you bought something and you sold it and money was made. You put all the effort in. And you reap the reward. And that feeling is incredible. And you're going to start searching for that feeling in everything you're doing. And you should. You should do it. When I walk to the post office, I try to walk as fast as I possibly can. I try to time myself sometimes. It's stupid. But there's like these funny little games that we do that we try to like, you know, if I walk and I go a minute faster back and forth, that's two minutes I can save in value. And then with that two minutes, maybe I can do this with it. It's just like, you got to use your mind to like play these games and create quests for yourself and create goals for yourself that you can control and all this other stuff. And now he's like, he's talking about quests. He's talking about <laughs> what the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> well, I'm kind of a, something's wrong with me. That's for sure. But there's, um, so many basic cards where you will realize that as you get better at something, you'll be like, okay, I'm better at this. How can I apply this to other fields in my life? And then you start applying the same things to all your fields. You realize consistency, this, that consistency. If I work on this, how can I spend my time getting more information better? This, how do I surround myself with people that are really good at the things that I like, but I can also offer them something as well. It's like, you know, how do I become useful to people and how do I make people useful to me without being greedy about it, without being this about it? It's, it's, you know, you'll be, you'll be very surprised when you try to, when you start to take, cause trust me, I, I was the biggest loser on this world. And all I did, all I wanted to do was play video games and just have fun. I didn't care. I didn't need money. I didn't need that. And then I realized, you know, okay, well now I have to take care of, so family members, okay, well, now I have a partner that I want to make sure she gets the most out of any, like, I want her to have anything she wants whenever she wants. And, you know, you can't do that if, you, if you're if you broke, you can't do that. And it is what it is, and, I, and you, you don't want a partner that wants you to give them everything, because that's definitely not the right thing, but you want to be the partner to give the other partner everything. And you also want to have a partner that wants to give you everything too. So you try to surround yourself with that type of person. You guys, trust me. You probably think, okay, Steve's rambling. I've already clicked off the video. I'm ready to dislike. But like, just remember that I'm a spitting image of consistency. I'm not good at anything. Like, I'm not, I'm not exceptional in any way. I'm sweating like crazy. My hair looks funny. I'm not good at anything. There's literally nothing that I'm good at in this world. I was an underachiever. I never really had much lucky luck with the ladies. I didn't even care, to be honest. But yeah, there's nothing I'm really good at. The only thing that I've ever taught myself is consistency. It's honestly crazy, but yeah. 
I don't even think the question has been answered. What I would do if I had to start again. There's no specific product that I would buy. There's no like specific thing that I would try to get. You know, everything that I've said in the video so far about trying to buy stuff that has a little bit of a little bit more demand so you can like actually get consistent feedback on what you're doing. Trying to like There's a lot of basic cards. Uh trying to like be more exposed to more things while still liking them. You know, if you want to sell just water type Pokemon cards plush merch, if you want to sell just this or that, I know a lot of people, like I referenced earlier, the Sleeve Queen, that stuff's crazy. And I see that store and I go, hey, what's stopping me from being someone who also sells singular sleeves? I mean, I'm putting effort into sorting through cards. They just buy packs of sleeves, pull them apart and list them as single sleeves. It's a big thing, by the way. You know, you just put them in a one stamp envelope, make it as cheap as possible to shipping. You're going to get a whole bunch of items missing, but you don't care. The only thing important to you is to get as many sales as possible. Get that consistent feedback. It feels really good. It feels really good. On to lightning cards, electric cards. Is this, what is this? That is ground type. What is this? That is normal type. Okay. We got some lightning cards. There's a lot of bulk. Ugh, that's something I probably don't do enough, to be honest. I've just taught myself something in this video. Is that I don't take away what... I, well, I do, but like I don't do it enough. I don't take away what other sellers are doing because, you know, I have a lot of things going on for myself. But I am trying to do that. I, like, I'm genuinely trying to like take more away from what other people are doing. And not copy, but just, you know, emulate and see where their successes are all the information's there it's all on ebay it's all on terapeak it's on everything you know it's uh i'm you know with my videos i'm trying to take on what i see other people have success with not with like the topics but you know with the way they edit them with the way they throw in some funny things here and there i also think they're funny so like and if someone you know if someone it honestly makes me feel really good when I, you know, make certain edits or certain cuts in a video and they comment on it. It's like, wow, I did that because someone might enjoy it. And then like they did enjoy it. And it's like, wow, that actually works. It's like, not works, but like that's actually someone else enjoyed and I enjoy it. So it's like we both enjoy. Lots of enjoyment going on right now. <laughs> oh man. Is anyone even watching? What's going on? Oh, 57 minutes. Another... Another hour wasted for other people in the world. Another hour of YouTube's <laughs> wasted. And there's definitely so many things that I could be doing better as well. And I want feedback a lot. I want as, I want you guys to shit on me and be like, Steve, this sucks. Steve, that sucks. Steve, you explained that horribly and whatever. Because that's what I'm trying to get more consistent at. I'm trying to get more consistent at getting my point across without stuttering. I'm trying to learn to talk and do like more one takes. And I'm like trying to get better at that. Like, you know, I suck at just like building sentences and thinking really fast about what I want to say. It's something I've never had to do. You know, you know, 30 years. I've never had to do this. I've never had to give advice. I've never had to do that. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do watch me and they want, it's not that they want advice, but like, if I have a little bit that I can help them out with, I mean, that's great. I can help them. They can help someone else. You know what happens then? That person helps someone else. And it's like a big tree of helpfulness. Maybe, I don't even know it, but maybe someone I help, help someone, they help someone, they help someone. And then we're at like 20 someone helped. All because I just decided to be the first person that helps. And your thing is, someone helped me. That's the thing. Someone helped me. And then that person probably got helped by someone else. You know what I mean? Like it's a, uh, that's, that's the goal. That's the thing. It's just like everyone kind of like banding together and you know, the words community and all this stuff get thrown around. I don't really care like about community. I think that's a cop out word for people that are like trying to sell a product. I think those people are trying to push an agenda and they hide behind the word community to like get their piece across, I guess, if that makes any sense. But I, that doesn't really affect me at all. Like, it's just whatever. It's just me. That's it. Oh, Grace, that Pikachu. That's really good. 
but yeah, what else? What are some more things that I would do when I very first started? I would, yeah, I mean, that's, you just have to do it. Like, just start. I think I said that earlier. You just have to start. Like, you never know. Start with cheap stuff around your house. Don't even go out to like, oh, I need to buy, I need to buy. Just start selling random, maybe you might not even sell cards. You might even just sell something at random. Like, think of all the things that you buy throughout your house, right? Like, what did, I don't know where they are, but like, you know, Kim uses these things on the back of her phone to like, hold hold her finger in and you know she bought some online she bought some themed ones with like some things that she likes and you got to think about that that's just like a key ring it's, someone's probably buying them in bulk from like you know alibaba or something and just selling them online i'm sure there's some pokemon themed ones like they have them on the pokemon center japan you could probably buy some merch off there and be the only person in your area selling it like there they, you know it doesn't have to be cards it can be anything people this uh thing is nuts how crazy pokemon is so yeah i think i'm pretty much done with that topic of like what i would do now the, to start off with just to reiterate myself that isn't like all the advice that i have to give on that question i'm sure i'll get that question again and then i'll be like oh i wish i said this i wish i said that i'll have to like you know as soon as this video ends i'm sure they're like oh i wish i said that but that's me learning right and by me staying consistent, answering questions, and trying to get better at answering them, I will have many moments like that over the next few years. If I, you know, if I keep making these kind of YouTube videos and stuff like that, I will tell you guys. You know, when I first started this year, or maybe like in November, and I started to really ramp it up in January, I was like, "All right, Steve." <laughs> Even though I refer to myself in the third person because I'm nuts, I go, "All right, Steve." Let's just do this for a year. Let's just do it for a year. Try and get a video done every day. It's not that easy to do a video every day. It's easier for me personally because I have this full recording setup now that I spent like $3,000 on. I can just sit here in front of the computer. It can do it all for me. It is easier. I did pay for it, but it is easier. And I'll do one video a day for a year. See what happens. What's the worst that can happen? You finish the year at the same spot you're in. Well, that's not that bad. And I don't, yeah, the, 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 the YouTube channel has not only paid off in monetary ways, mono, 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 I don't, still <laughs> don't know how to say that. Look at this book. Look at this. Abdos. You know, this flygon that I, that I listed for sale. Oh, I think I said it in the last video. Yeah. I listed a flygon for sale. that was worse than this. Sold for $2. It's just nuts. People buy anything. You just got to be the one that listed. But, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's crazy. And I mean, the thing is, when you, like, when you really think about it, I get messages from you guys quite a lot. And that's the only reason why I really keep trying to do this. There's a huge core of people that, like, bounce off. We bounce off each other. We talk to each other. They give me feedback. I give them feedback. And, you know, I don't know how many. There's, there's hundreds. There's, there's not like 300, but there's probably like, you know, 120 people that regularly message me on Instagram. Not every day, but every few days. And I love talking to everyone about all this stuff. It's how, it's what I'm passionate about. I love it. But like, I love the fact that, you know, I can sit here and benefit from this YouTube channel in the tens of thousands. I'm sure I've benefited tens of thousands this year. Who knows? People don't want to talk about numbers. I don't really care to talk about numbers. Some people say like, Steve, you should push your store more on your channel. No, my, why? If people want to find my store, they'll find it. It's in the links. It's not a big deal. It's, it's you know, I don't want to do that. But like, you know, you could sell so much more stuff if you like showed off all the stuff that you're selling all the time. Like, yeah, I could, but like, that's not what I set out to do. If that's what I set out to do, maybe. But this, the YouTube channel isn't about me. It's about the life of a Pokemon card seller. That's pretty much it. You know, maybe there's a few videos here and there that are about me. I talk about myself and I do show off my store, but not every single video. A lot of people kind of get it wrong where they just focus on me, 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 me. And then they're like, man, why is no one watching my stuff? Well, it's about the process. People are interested in the process of like anything. It's not about or process, whatever you want, how you ever want to say it. It's not about the, 
And I'm not going to say I cracked the YouTube algorithm. I don't fucking know. I'm, I'm fucking... I'm new to this more than you guys probably are. I'm still doing my best. So, a, what are these lightning cars doing in here? These aren't electric. What is, what's going on? But, uh... Yeah, it's... it's uh, There are other people out there who have benefited more from my channel than I have. And that is the best feeling possible. Like, I can't even describe. I have people messaging me, Steve, I, you know, I, I just sold all these items because, you know, I've been watching you for a year. You know, some... <laughs> so, I, this is not a proud moment of mine, but years ago, when I was doing my one-minute videos, not a lot of people... There's, there is a few people from here from back then, but... The EV Heroes came out, right? And I was like, this set is, like, literally jacked. I've been doing this for so long, and I've never seen a better set. Like, honestly, I never saw a better set. And I, I made videos on this set like five times over. Because, I don't know, I used to make one minute videos that would just be kind of cringy. But like, is this the best set ever? Stuff that people made these days. But I didn't really talk about numbers or anything like that. I just kind of showed off the item. And I was like, this is the best set. This is the best set. This, this thing's amazing. And that set in particular, EV Heroes, it is... Like, just for example, like this guy messaged me. He's like, Steve, you know... I'm, for some reason, I just believed you. I bought 340 EV Heroes booster boxes on their last restock. I still have 220 of them. I All the ones that I've sold have paid off the rest, and I don't know how to thank you. You have completely changed my life. I didn't even buy that many boxes. I have like 80 EV Heroes boxes. I bought more alt arts because I love cards. I hate booster boxes. Cards are way better than booster boxes. No offense, but like, I love the cards. I love touching them. I love playing with them. I love feeling them. I love smelling them. I love them. But you gotta understand, like, people have benefited more off me than I have of this channel. And that is an amazing feeling. And that is something that I will take with me to the grave. And I will keep doing these videos for, like, you know, a longer period of time because I know another one of those people. And it's not even monetary. It doesn't have to be like that. It's like, Steve, because of the way you spoke and like your outlook, you know, I've, I've fixed a few things in my life and I'm so much happier than I was. You know, I always used to worry about what I didn't have, but you always show the stuff. You show your really rare stuff that you're like happy to have. And then you go off and show something that you bought for like $5 and you get really excited over it. Like I, I need to consistently remind myself that there is more to life than like expensive things. And that's definitely true. You know, when I get those messages, it puts me back. You know, it's, it's like... Yeah, that's true. Like, why do I care what people think about me if I have rare and expensive cards and if I don't? It's not a metric of success. It just means you're stupid with money. That's it. Oh, man. Yo, what a... There's like 10 of you that send me the message. Snap Charmander sold for like 70... I think it's like 68,000 US dollars on auction. Oh, I, I bought mine for... I regret buying mine, for example, for, for the record, I regret buying mine. With the way interest rates are at the moment, I regret spending any money, big money. But when I was buying a lot of my rare cards, interest rates went the same way they are now. And, you know, I wasn't more focused on, like, my future. I've never really cared too much about my future. I just care about the next day. And I still do care about the next day. But I care a little bit about my future because I would like to live in a world, or my world, where, you know, Kim never has to work ever again. I would love that. If I have to go to work, or if I have to do work every single day, that's fine. But if she can... I don't know where she is tonight. She went out to the movies or something. And she's watching this new Hunger Games. And that's not a measure of success to go to the movies. But I know that if she can... Is that a hollow bleed? Well, that is a hollow bleed. Can you, guys, you guys probably can't see that. Nah. Camera's too bright. I mean, the light's too bright. But, you know, it's, it's just the movies. But it's like another thing that I can be like, yeah, that's fine. Go enjoy yourself. Little wins. I'm happy that we have enough money. We can enjoy the little things in life. And she can go pretty much do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. She doesn't have to worry. A lot of people have to worry about a lot of things in this life. Life is really bad for some people, especially in some parts of the world at the moment. It's honestly horrible to even think the fact that I'm sitting here playing with cards and there's people living in like the worst places possible. But at the end of the day... You kind of just got to focus on the people around you and try and help people out wherever you can, whenever you can. 
And it's just horrible that there's some people that live in certain ways or certain, you know, wars going on and all this other stuff. I don't want to get political because, you know, I'm just, I'm from Australia and we get, we have it incredibly well and lucky here. It's honestly crazy. The, the level of luck I have for being born in Australia. But it's, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's a little bit deep for the, for the last part, but. Yeah, that's uh my goal is to make sure that she never has to go back to work ever again. But you know, find these goals, find these little wins, find these ways that you can get around your brain mentally. They don't always have to be, you know, based around money. Where are the Neo Destiny cards? What have I done? Wait, what? Man. I'm terrible. I don't even know where they went. Oh no, this is... This is bad. I'll find them later somewhere. Probably. Probably somewhere. <laughs> oh, this is the worst video I've ever created. Um, Yeah, I mean, I hope you guys do enjoy these ramblings. You know, I'm going to be... I'm going to be sorting. I have... I have... I got two more types to do, so I want to do this all in this video. I'll talk more. I'm going to take a big sip of... Simple one. Maybe we'll change the change the topic. Yeah. Maybe I'll talk more. I want some like I want I want a lot more feedback. You know, there there is a lot of people that don't leave as many comments as, as I wish. They don't message me on Instagram. You know, I don't real I don't need the validation, but I want like I want genuine feedback. You know, this video I put up today, I spent. Uh, well, I'm, sure, I'm not sure if you, you've probably seen it, but I've, it's uh, the one where I'm making pancakes, you know, the whole idea behind it was me starting my job, whatever, quitting, and then I failed, I had to go back to work, I fixed everything in my life, changed my mindset, realized that it's not that easy, came back with a vengeance, and now I work and work a million times a day, and so there's, there's some really stupid comments on it, it's like, he's like, you quit your job, but you're still working, buddy, it's like, yeah, I know that, you dickhead, like, <laughs> what the fuck? As a, yeah, I know that. What are you, stupid or something? Like, yeah, I know I'm still working. I'm still sorting cards and stuff every day, but like, it's just so funny. The comments people make, they crack me up, I swear to God. They're just like, oh, this other guy, what did this one guy say? He's just like, he's like, you, there's like, people like us will never reach the levels that you've reached because you got to 100x during COVID. It's just, oh my God, yeah. COVID is the reason why I'm sorting played old bag of bulk. I'm obviously destroying life right now, my friend. But all, all bad comments aside, I want feedback on it. I'm not a professional video maker, right? I am just a guy. I'm just a guy that's trying his best. The The video that I, the, the, the computer that I create the videos on, the one I'm currently recording on, is my old computer. And it is really slow. My new computer is really juiced up. It's amazing. The specs, top of the line, everything. Not anymore because computers change every three months. But when I when I built it a few months back, yeah, it's amazing. But the current computer is the one I record on. So all the files are on there and I just edit them on this computer because it's easier. Yeah, that one, this, this computer struggles. So when I record the videos, I do it on a struggling computer. <laughs> and it's a bit of a grind to get through them. But it's... You know, I can't use that as an excuse. I just have to do it. Because some people are trying to edit videos on their phone. So you know, some someone always has it worse. I have a lot of jungle jolteons for some reason. Um, there we go. That's a lot of Pikachus. Um, what am I getting at? I had I had an angle there, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> I had an angle. Oh yeah, I want the feedback. You know, was the music too loud? Yo, Steve, at this point in the video, you know, four minutes in, it's like, you know, you cut here and it just looked really bad. It just, I don't know, why'd you do that? I, I, I don't want to make crazy viral good videos. I don't, I don't really care. I don't want to be YouTube famous. I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine anything worse. I feel like I got a few comments now that are negative. I laugh them off, but I'm sure someone will, you know, something will change or maybe like someone will expose me and then I'll get a bunch of people coming after me. I mean, Rattle put me in one of his videos. The other day, I don't know why. Something to do with signature cards. You know what happened? You know what happened from that? I'll talk to you. I'll tell you guys about this. Rattle will probably come and watch this and 
laugh at it because, you know, I don't know. I I have nothing against the guy. I, don't know. I think what he does is great. You know, he, you know, exposes a lot of people that do bad stuff. He also, like, makes a lot of videos on people that didn't really do anything wrong, like me. But that's whatever. So he put me in his video. And then there's random people in the comments saying I'm selling fake signatures and all this other stuff. So people took it out of the, that themselves, took the liberty of mass reporting my eBay listings of my signatures that I had displayed. And because I had my signatures displayed, for whatever reason, they got, they got reported so much as fake on eBay. You can report listings as fake and fraudulent or whatever people chose. There was enough fuss around it that eBay actually messaged me and gave me like this warning email and saying you need to prove where these came from at the same time ebay also suspended my payouts they just got unsus unsuspended this was around five or six days ago or something like that so they first they suspended my payouts and then they also like you know you need to prove where these came from i was like whoa what's going on here i didn't even do anything wrong but you know i just took all the listings down responded to the email ebay emails of like you know luckily i didn't sell any I've never sold a signature on eBay. I've only ever sold two signatures before and they were to two close friends and their signatures I bought in the aftermarket. So I didn't, I didn't get them signed. I don't have that many signatures that I actually got signed myself because I live in Australia and I didn't have access to events sort of things. I have a few that people have got me with my name on them from events, but other than that, it's whatever. And I mean, people think that my stuff's fake. I don't, I don't really care. I don't know if everything I own is legit because I wasn't there when they got signed. I just used my gut to like get a general idea if something's real or fake with the signatures. I don't really like them too much, but it is what it is. Uh, it's, it's just an extra thing that they're rare and they're cool. I like to buy signatures from events that a lot of my trophies are were given out at in Japanese regional events. So I have a lot of those, but other than that, <laughs> people from the rattle video mass reported my stuff on eBay because Somehow he managed me to look like the bad guy. <laughs> I don't know, but it's whatever. And you'd think by this point, someone mass reporting my eBay, you know, my stuff getting taken down, my payouts getting suspended, I would get angry. And at first I was, but I've, I've learned, you know, just get over things, don't retaliate, don't do this, don't do that. It It is what it is. I mean, people... If I was in the shoes of the people reporting me, I probably would have thought because of Rattle's video that I'm in the wrong. It looked like I was, you know, selling signatures, that you know, he said I got them done myself, I'm part of the problem, all this other stuff. It's perfectly fine. It's they, People are just uninformed. They're not stupid. They didn't do the wrong thing. Yeah, it would have been great if people reached out to me before mass reporting me, but I can't control people. They can do whatever they want. That's the beauty of the world. People can do whatever they want. But that's, that's something that happened this week as well. That was pretty fun. That was a great email to wake up to. But that's fine. But that's also what I get. You know, it's my fault. That's what I get for getting involved. You know, that guy that the video is about, I was like vocal on Instagram about that guy being like, yo, this guy's like getting through PSA's authentication per per process by getting items signed. And he was like selling fake cards in PSA cases, which I was getting upset about it because I am someone who has just in PSA grading fees, I don't even know, probably like $220,000 worth of cards. Just in fees. So not even the value of the card inside. Just in PSA grading fees, I have $220,000. If you were to grade the cards at $15 US each. So like, I was responding to those things as someone who was heavily, I wouldn't say invested, but you know, I would say I rely on PSA for a lot of the value that I hold in my business. So I was like, yo, PSA, you got to fix this because, you know, every time something negative happens to a company and you hold an item, now CGC is, is another big problem. They get so much crap, whether it's deserved or not deserved, don't really care. Anyone can make their mind up on what's deserved. If there's like, if you hold those cards and then the company does something that like puts people off from like trying to buy and sell, like trying to buy those cards to keep in their collections, it's gonna, it's gonna sting. And if you, if you rely on the income to like, you know, get through life. And if you lie on the income for me, I rely on it. So, you know, my, 
you know, mom doesn't have to go back to work, or my, you know, my girlfriend doesn't have to work, all this other stuff. Well, you have to be vocal about some of these things, because it only takes... Imagine if someone buys one of those fake cards signed by the artist. They get it in person, they say, this is not fake. And then the person goes, yeah, well, you didn't know what you were buying, so you deserve to lose the money. And the person, people think she's selling, like, fake Mario Pikachus. Imagine the people who are like buying those fake Mario Pikachus think, thought they weren't fake because they were PSA graded, but they didn't realize. Even if they didn't read the description, even if they didn't read the title, they just saw it, Mario Pikachu, wow, PSA graded, just buy it. And then they get it and they're like, oh, it's fake. Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, I mean, maybe the person should have put more effort into like buying the thing, but it's not, it's never on the person to do the things. And as people, as sellers, we shouldn't try to like do things intentionally to deceive people. That's why I don't deal in mystery products. That's why I don't try to get involved in any sort of those things. So many people are like, hey, Steve, if I give you $500, would you give me a mystery box? Hey, Steve, I give you a thousand. I have had people offer me $10,000 to, to make a box, a mystery box filled with value. The problem is, I was like, okay, well, if he wants $10,000, I got to think how much items I'm going to put in. All right. Well, I got to think to myself, well, I want to make like 15%. So I'm only going to put in like $8,500 of like, you know, what it costs me or maybe even less of value because, you know, I want to come out ahead and all these things go through your head as like a human being, as a business, as someone trying to build value when you're getting money back in. I just refuse. And I say that right now while I have a Christmas mystery box, <laughs> but it's not really a mystery because I tell everyone exactly what they're going to get. You're going to get three packs and a and a plush at retail price. The, not even retail price, at literal cost price. Because I don't have supplies for any of those things. I'm literally just buying them from the Pokemon Center and then boxes from aftermarket. And then giving people the items at the actual cost. I'm even losing. Depending on where people are from, if they live in like regional Australia, it's going to, it costs me more to ship there. I lose like $1.50. If they live in a city... I might make 50 cents to a dollar. It's like, it's just the way it's set up. I can't, I, I didn't want to like, you know, it's a mystery product. The benefit for me is to reduce my postage costs and that's why I'm doing it. And that's it. So I'm, I might lose a little bit. I might gain a little bit. It's not a big deal. You know, I, I figured that all the losses off will be offset by the amount of views and everything and all the money I get paid by YouTube, which is going to be a lot this month. Well, not a, like, well, it's a lot, but it's also going to be like more than it's ever been before. I don't know what it's going to be, but if anyone's curious, that video that I have, uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you. How about if you guys are in an hour and 20 minutes, you deserve to look at this. So let's, uh, let's get up this. Oh, I just sold another mystery box. How good is that? You can see my phone. Oh, this is my phone right here. So. If I click on this video, Day in the Life of a Pokemon Seller, click on that one there. It has 62,600 reviews. If I go to the revenue, $201. That's fucking crazy, right? I mean, that video did take me like six hours to make. <laughs> so right now we're at a comfortable, I have to pay 30% tax on this $201. So whatever, I don't know what that is, but $140 and... I'm at around like $20 an hour. That's less than I was getting at the supermarket. It's kind of funny. Everything, uh, every, everything, all things considered. <laughs> I quit the job just to make less. But, uh, if you're curious of how much, um, uh, how much money a video like that makes, $201. Now it is a little bit more because, you know, they watch that video and they watch another video and then they watch another video and watch another video and it's all a bunch of little incremental gains and maybe, Maybe 10 people buy something from my store and then this and that and then you guys, you guys know. It's all about tiny little wins consistently, but uh, I don't even know what the hell we're talking about right now. We have so many cards to sort. <coughs> I think I need to maybe take a break and come back or take a really big swig of water. I'm real. I'm actually really enjoying these videos because like so like the Ask Steve videos, I love them. I love doing those. That's probably my favorite thing to do. What are these? Oh, there's got scramble promos at the end here. I kind of bent them a little bit, taking them out. It's banned. I don't know what else is here. Whoa, whoa. Kimberly, why are these in here? 
this is a normal and steel type cards. This is not old back. This is crazy. It's some juice. Um, some Delta Species cards. Just robbed a card on the ground. Wow, lots of Delta Species. Okay. These probably shouldn't have been here, but whatever. Put those in. An There's so many cards to list, guys. I can't even. You want to know why I'm doing this on video? Because I was like, okay, well, you know, people want want, to, want me to put some more videos out. And I want to do it, but i got to sort some cards. And why don't we do two birds, one stone? <laughs> That's, that's why these sorting videos are so enjoyable for me. That's why I'm really getting into this. Because I can get some work done at the same time. That's the one detriment to the Ask Steve. It, it takes a little bit of planning, printing all the questions out, prepping myself to go on camera. It's not easy to go on camera, man. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't fault a lot of these uh, YouTubers, these big guys that have been doing this for a long time in the public eye, putting themselves out there, you know, putting their loved ones out there or whatever like you know showing their life off being vulnerable all this other stuff you know as, as lame as that sounds i don't fault these people it's not easy to consistently day in day out do this kind of stuff and a lot of people are doing it with like very low rewards for example like that 50 60 000 views is like 200 dollars, and it's just like okay well you know steve that's that's a, that's a lot of money and that might not be updated to today's, like, it might, it might be like, you know, a few days ago, that was the payment or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't sometimes, but even then it's like, you know, if a channel has 10 times that 600,000 view channel and they have, you know, smaller videos like that, that are putting a lot of effort into and they get 600,000 views a month. That's only like, that's only three grand. That's less than I was getting in the supermarket. It's just one of those things where you have to do them both at the same time. <laughs> Everything comes back to work at the supermarket. I think, in general, everyone that I know in life who has worked one of these really shitty jobs come out of the mud. Like, I'm talking like they worked these crappy jobs. They worked in, you know, retail. They worked in the supermarkets. That's, they work in department stores. They work in... Where else do people work? They work in, you know, fast food. Oh, my God. Fast food is like i have never seen people work harder in my life in fast food sure i'm sure there's lazy fast food workers there's lazy workers in everything two no rarity dragon is they're just sitting here i gotta get these cards listed now that's like 100 bucks a pop all right it's just like you know sure there's there's always people you know a little bit different in everything who was this hollow bleed no it's not this is beautiful this car's like basically near me. Oh well. Oh well. On the stack. <laughs> um, what were they talking about? I already forgot. Oh yeah, it's not easy to do these things, but yeah, there's a lot of jobs that suck day in day out, and it feels like you're stuck, and it feels like you're lost, and that that, that might be a little bit of my of my motivation. Oh, the Neo Lugia. That's a great card. It's a little bit of my motivation is I want to help people that may be a little bit stuck, maybe a little bit, need a little bit, even if it's not about selling cards or doing this, it's just like, hey, we can fix a few things in our life. Oh, no rarity, Clefairy. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, the people that I know in life that had the shittest jobs, I'm talking like fast food, all this, you know, on average, most of those people don't make it out, don't make it big. Just because of the nature of real life, the nature of, you know, feeling like you're being held down a lot, all this other stuff, it it is it is what it is, but it's um quite impressive, you know, when I do talk to those people, when I know people that I used to work with that now run their own businesses, I know people I used to work with that now are like, you know, I, I know people that work at the supermarket, you know, 15 years and then they leave and I don't know someone, I know someone who's an accountant. And they're a very good accountant, actually. Like They're quite impressive at what they do. They run their own business. They have clients. They have everything. They're managing everything. And people don't realize that the skills that you learn working in fast food, working in retail, understanding, like, you're asked to do a lot in some of those situations. Like, I know a lot of McDonald's workers, when they're working, like, 9 p.m. and there's no one else around and, or there's only, there's graveyard shift and there's so many things to do and, you have to manage like 10 different things at once and you got to put out fires and you got to do this and you got to do that and whatever who cares but like they like 
some of the hardest working people, smartest people, they just, you might not get the same chance to get ahead and go to a fancy university or anything like that. And they come from those jobs and they are the most real people. They are so grounded. It's honestly impressive to like meet those kind of people. Nothing to take away from people that didn't have to do that. Hey, you can't fault someone as a parent. It's like a lot of people are like, oh man, that guy's, that guy's lucky because his parents pay for everything. Or that, that girl's lucky because her parents pay for everything. It's like, if you're a parent, isn't that your goal? To like, kind of like, you know, pay for your kid? Obviously, you want to teach the children to, you know, be useful members of society and whatever. But like, wouldn't you give them everything that you possibly could? Now, these, these, uh, these cards have kind of like really heated up. These are some absolute heaters, to be honest. Lots of promos. There's like 20 Game Boy Dragon Eyes. I didn't even know I had those, to be honest. I haven't sorted old back bulk in about, ooh, I don't know, six months, seven months. So there's not many. Usually I would get old back cards in and I would try to list the holo cards, but there's too many singles to manage. Yeah, my graded card store, my sales are actually like, you know, I'm not getting more graded cards back. I'm selling a few and stuff like that, but I'm not, I've kind of like, I've just kind of turned my brain off that. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, I want to sell stuff for the plush and stuff like that, but like I'm really focused on selling singles right now because I'm having a blast. It is like so much fun. Back to the roots. Like I, I'm talking in the comments with someone who's like, before I said, I got oh, my throat's dead. I don't know how people do this. <clears throat> like the connection you get with people when you sell a graded card. Yeah, it's great. They get a final collection piece. They get some like a grail of theirs. Usually when you're selling graded cards, it's like, oh, this is like a grail of mine, etc. You know, unless it's like a modern promo Pikachu that's like $80 or whatever. It's like, this is cool to display. There's a different side to like graded cards. It's like really, you know, they're really expensive to get. They're really expensive to, to grade. Everyone knows. But they get single cards. You know, get people, they buy every Kecleon you have. They buy all the token ticks. They're like, hey, can I buy all your Chansey cards? Or hey, had someone today buy like, just buy this guy right here. Come here. I had a guy buy like 32 Kamiya cards off me. It's like... I can't explain it. That's another thing you could do. You could sell certain cards of certain artists. You can have eBay stores dedicated to certain artists. Who knows? You can do whatever you want when it comes to making your own store. It's all about you. It's not about anything else. But, um... You know, he bought 32 Kamiya cards off me because I put in on all this effort to list all these random cards from random sets that no one else has who and you know even if you, other people listed them that's great more more people more, more things people to choose from but uh yeah sending singles you get like a sold bunch of ditto cards to someone today as well it's you know someone bought a few level x's and it, it feels a little bit better because there's no like you know as much as i love psa or grading companies and they've changed my life and they've helped me a lot and everything the worst thing about all these out of outside Pokemon things is that it just takes so much money away. It injects a lot of money in for like indirect reasons because like, you know, grading a PSA 10 card might increase the price by a few thousand. So someone wants to pay that money, but it's like PSA takes their cut, eBay takes their cut. A thousand dollars spent on eBay on a graded card isn't like a thousand dollars back into Pokemon. It's more like... You know, oh rub my ears my ears getting itchy i don't know why but a thousand dollars spent on ebay isn't really like a thousand dollars that goes back into the seller's pocket and they buy a thousand dollars more stock a thousand dollars spent is usually like eight hundred dollars more in the seller's pocket and they can buy more so like they have a thousand dollars they buy a thousand dollars of items and they sell them maybe they make a profit and they can sell more but you know what i mean it's like a thousand dollars spent isn't a thousand dollars that goes back into pokemon is what i'm trying to say you got import taxes you got everything that's why I started my website so people don't have to pay import taxes because I hate that. I hate all these like unnecessary fees that take it out of our hobbies, take it out of our like spaces. Because you know, if I get paid, if I sell something for a thousand dollars, I love the fact that sometimes if they buy it on my site and it's an item, you know, I can go and spend a thousand dollars more on Pokemon. That's it. And maybe that's just my mindset or something like that, but like, you know, PSA. Does a, it's a great thing to have PSA to sell cards in like different conditions that are rare because it's a really important thing 
to have like a genuine understanding of the grade because you know if you've ever sold trust me before psa was popular selling card singles was uh it, it was it was rough sometimes it's like oh that's not that's not mint that's got a bit of dot in it oh, so it's not i want a really perfect condition oh it's not, you know what do you think that is that's near mint to mint i don't think that's near mint to mint it's like now you can just grade them it's a 15 dollar fee to do it but now you can just grade them CGC, you know, I don't want to knock them. They're a great company. I, I love CGC. I've I've graded like 12,000 cards with them. You know, they kind of... Uh, I, I wish they would have changed their grading scale a little bit earlier. Probably not change the label, but, you know, change up all their things a little bit earlier. I don't think it's like a great thing that they graded like multiple millions of cards and then changed everything. Cards that are 9.5s are now labeled as 10 and everything like that, whatever. It's a huge mindset change, but like... Other than that... Uh, you know, they have their flaws it's not psa which is great because just having two companies that have the same scale is whatever but these companies that can assign things that we can all agree on i always like to say like <laughs> cgc price of a card is more of an indication of a real price of like what something would be worth in that condition theoretically because like you know psa 10 ten thousand dollars cgc 10 you know, 3500 It's like, alright, is this a $10,000 card or is this a 3500 Me, personally, I would be happier knowing if the raw card was like 2000 and then the graded 10 CGC is like 3500 I feel like that makes a whole lot more sense than like 2000 raw and $10,000 <laughs> PSA 10. It just feels like, I don't know why. And everyone's like, because everyone is so invested, the same reason why I wanted to like, you know, kind of spread awareness on that guy that was grading fake cards you know everyone has in money invested and no one wants to say it there's a bunch of people that hate cgc and they have millions of dollars of psa cards and they're like oh i just don't like them because they, they do this and they do it's like dude you can just say you don't like them because you have a lot of psa cards i feel like no one's ever going to be like <laughs> no one's going to be like oh man you you have all these psa cards and you can't admit it and they're like no 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 i just don't like cgc because of the way they grade, it's just like, you can just admit the fact that you'd be like, I don't want to push this company because I have 99% of my net worth in this other company. People do the same thing with stocks. People do it with housing. People do it with anything. I mean, I just, <laughs> you're just human. You're looking out for yourself. I feel like that's pretty human of most people. You know, I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm dumb. And I'm sure I do it as well. I'm sure I do it inadvertently. I sure sometimes I tell people, oh, you know, I might not think that's too great. Or maybe, maybe don't try to do that. Or maybe if you, because I'm also doing the same thing. Maybe I do that subconsciously and I don't even realize. I mean, I don't really care. That's whatever. I thought there's a print error on this card, but someone just like shat on it. That's kind of funny. Um, maybe I shouldn't say shat this late in the video. No one watches this anyway. Look at the swirl on this Dragonite. Look at that. That's Turn back the video right now. Pull your phone out. Get it out of your pants. Put your hand in your pants real quick. Check this out. Look at that swirl. Isn't that like the best swirl placement you've ever seen in your life? Swirls are funny. Like, I remember back in the day, no one cared about a swirl. I don't know when it happened. Do I need more water? Mm. Mm. I just licked my lips. <clears throat> All right. My throat's got a little bit left, but I got some fighting cards to do after this. So this video is going to go on for ages. Um, oh, let's talk about swirls, man. I remember when people started being like, I don't know. I don't know where, like it, on Facebook groups, it became a thing like 2017 ish. People will be like, swirls this. So, not people, there's just a few people. I feel like there was maybe an Instagram thing beforehand. Insta because there was like the Facebook community in Pokemon, and then there was the Instagram community. And, you know, then there was just like people that sold on eBay and they didn't even know that Instagram or Facebook existed. It was like three separate things, which no one really knew. And if you were good, you could go on eBay and sell, also go on Instagram and buy, and go on Facebook and also buy. Or you could do it in you know, vice versa, whatever you, whichever way you felt like it, whichever way you meant you had the best uh, outreach and everything you wanted to do. But like, 
swirls, man. Like, I, it's just so funny. I remember them just like, it was a lot more of an old card thing. You know, in the older cards, because there are more swirls. There's Cosmos Hollow. This is where people wanted to get them. But it, now it's in like other cards. It's in different hollow patterns. And people wanted them to be a certain way. And this and that. And I want my texture like this. Or, you know, all oh, that card has less saturation. And all this other stuff. This never used to be in here. Same with grading. It never used to be that crazy. Because I didn't even know what grading was until like late 2016. And I'll say it like. I joined some middleman submissions on, I don't know, this random group, I think, that I graded my first, like, 40 cards. And, um, uh, I really can just talk about random stuff, right? So, I graded my, my first ever grading submission was just 40 of, like, the most perfect, because, you know, I looked into it every, you know, when I first started my first free grading, the same questions I get now, I ask other people. What do you What do you think this is going to grade? Or do you think this is going to get this? Or do you think it's going to get that? Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It's like, I was that guy too. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And, you know, I was trying to send people photos. What do you think about this? And I was just like, oh, I'm just going to send. It was a big deal at the time. $7 a card. I th at least I think it was $7 a card. 7 bucks a card. And what else? It, I had like 48 cards, whatever it cost. Yeah, you know how long that grading submission took? Four days. Four days from when the guy said, yeah, I just sent them all out. I don't know where he was in, in America, but four days. It's crazy that I've had submissions that were used to be finished in four days. I mean, it's not even that slow now. I had a submission finished in 20 days recently. So that's not like, yeah, that was crazy. And then it cost me a lot of money. That was like $7 a card and but yeah, what is that like two fifty or something like that? No, that's like three three twenty or something. I, don't know. I can't think. I'm sorry. I can't think at the moment. I've been talking for almost two hours. Give me a break. But yeah, it it was a a lot at the time because I didn't have that much money. But I, I didn't get good grades at all. Actually, no, I did get. I I got two tens and I got forty seven PSA nines, all on old back. Uh, not old back. Just Wizards of the Coast English Hollows. So I got two tens and I got no two tens and some forty-seven nines or maybe thirty-seven nines, something like that. the The story is uh, muddled in my head. So it's so funny that like the grading costs with that submission were actually covered by the two tens. My two tens were Blaine's Charizard Unlimited PSA ten and Giovanni's Gyarados Unlimited PSA ten. Well, they weren't covered, but the majority of them. I got back. I put my Blaine's Charizard on eBay. I sold it for around $180. You know, this might be a little bit later than 2016, but I, I can't really remember, to be honest. Too much reminiscing in the past few days. It made my, made my brain turn to mush. But I got... <laughs> yeah. Blaine's Charizard sold for like $180 PSA 10. And I was like, $180? This is like a $30 card. Like, this is awesome. Is this real life? Like, I was, like, legitimately losing my mind over the fact that grading works. Sold all the nines for, like, you know, nothing, whatever, like $15, $20. PSA 9 Jungle Clefable was, like, a $15 card. It was not much. Like, it's... Things were different back then, but, uh... Yeah. That's when I first got kind of exposed. And then I bought a few more cards. I started to learn a little bit more about other... I was gonna say genres, but other errors... So I started to buy a few gold stars and, you know, I got actually, I thought Japanese gold stars looked really cool at the time. I had no idea, but I wanted to get a Latios and Latias gold star. I found those that were sick. I wanted to get a Rayquaza, but that was so expensive. I couldn't afford that. And I bought a Latias gold star, or Latios gold star for like $48 off eBay. And I thought it was the best condition card I've ever seen in my life. And I got a PSA 9. Thanks. Thanks, PSA. I still sold that for like $110. And I was like, oh my god, imagine $48 mint gold stars. Take me back. Take me back. But, um, yeah, it's just, that was like some of my first grading submissions. And then I was like, okay, grading's pretty good. You seem to get a lot more value out of grading. You just got to pay for the fee and wait for it. Then I started sending more. And then I told you earlier in the video, if you've been watching for this whole time, that, uh, I, I, graded, I had a lot of Wizards of the Coast promos, and because I got them from the people that received them in, like, the sealed decks, the packs, everything like that, 
I was able to kind of take advantage of that and I had mint ones. And then I really started to like get a lot of money. This was when I started like 2017, I really started to ramp this up. And I was selling like PSA 10 surfing Pikachu promos, PSA 10 snap Pikachus. I was selling for like $100 each. I was like, I paid 10 cents for these. I'm selling for $100 each. Like I was like the lowest. It was insane. Like I was grading like all this stuff. These Wizards of the Coast promos. And then like after the 20th anniversary and grading became more popular, PSA became more popular. It was just nuts. I was selling so many things. I was like, why didn't I grade? I sold so many of those cards. You know, I mean, like, you know, I'm, one of my friends, uh, Max, um, he like, he likes Dark Gyarados. And I was like, I was like, yeah, Max, I got heaps of Dark Gyarados. You know, he bought a few cards off me and I just like, I sent him, I sold him like, cause I bought like 300 Dark Gyarados for a dollar each. I sold him like 80 of them for like, I sold him like 80 of them for like two bucks each. And he bought those off my website when I like first made that. It was one of my first sales on my website with all those Gyarados to Max. And it was crazy. He put them in like a YouTube video. <laughs> it was so funny. I watched that video the other day. I was like, man, they're my Gyarados. Uh, that's so funny. Gyarados, I guess. That's what you want to say. But yeah. So many memories from doing this stuff, man. That's why I wish I made the YouTube channel earlier. Honestly, because, you know, my, like I've said, my memory is not the best. I don't know why. I wish it was better. Kim hates my memory being so bad. I can't remember things I do like five minutes ago. But it's um I wish I just documented so much of this, so much of the mail, so much of like the sales, meeting people, the grading submissions, just documenting things that are happening. I wish I also wish my my channel had like every box ever released opened. I just wish I had that. That would be like, a, you know, if I ever won lottery, I can't do it in this current day because it's literally way too, I focus way too much on value to like do something like that. I would, I would lose like all my money doing that. But, you know, I, I wish, I wish I had that. That would be crazy to have like a channel to have every single box opened, English and Japanese, and maybe just some other random languages thrown in there. Could you imagine, could you imagine that? That'd be crazy. You know what would be funny? If my cam, if my microphone wasn't on, it says it's working, but that would be so funny. I should really test it before I went like recording and before I did one of these. Could you imagine? Oh my, I would probably not record another video ever again. I would disappear and you guys would be like, what happened to Steve? Oh, that'd be funny. That'd be so fucking funny, man. <laughs> Oh, that'd be a, that would be a laugh. But yeah, there's, um, oh, I haven't really asked you guys many questions in this. How are you going? How's your lives? How are everything? Reach out on Instagram, have a chat. Let's not talk about Pokemon for once. That'd be nice. As much as I love it. We always talk about it. We can talk about anything. We can do anything, actually. No one's controlling us. All right. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing it for YouTube content now. Before, I was doing this for, not, for myself. But now I've realized... Me sorting cards... I get paid $20 from the video. That'll be my $20 for two hours of work. I'll be back... You know, I when I was 16... You know, in my video, I put it... I joined the supermarket in 2010. I just did that for the sake of the video, but I'm pretty sure I joined it in like 2008 and I was working like 10 hours after school every week. But, um, yeah, I think my first ever, I think it was like $8 an hour or something. So I, I don't know if this is less than that, but it might be, it might be, but I don't, you don't have to, you can't think of things in those ways. Look at these Neophile EVs I got. That's awesome. I love the Neophile cards. They're so sick. Um, uh... Team Rocket. What are you doing there? That's a nice thing. Sumiyoshi Kazuki. I'm not sure if I ever showed it off, but I do have a Sumiyoshi Kazuki uh, Rusty drawing. That's pretty cool. What have I done here? Now we really got to focus on the cards because I've probably run out of topics. I haven't run out of topics. There's so many artists that I wish that I could get my uh, dog 
dog drawn by. But right now, messaging artists and trying to get in touch with them and everything, it's a really like a sore topic with all the signatures, all the people that are spamming them, getting the signatures, selling them. You know, whatever, scumbag, but like, it's, uh, you, you can't really talk to an artist at all as a random person because they have to fear for their jobs. Like, that, I don't think these people realize that they're like getting the signatures done, flexing them on Instagram, showing them off. They can't help themselves. They, they can't help themselves. Like, yeah, I have heaps of signatures by artists that have done drawings for me. I'm never going to show them. I'm never going to show them off. No, it wasn't intended to be shown off amazing pieces but yeah it's whatever i'm never gonna show them because out of respect for the artist these people that are selling them it makes it look like the artist might be selling them you know because the pokemon companies they're ruthless man they'll they'll take people down they're like they'll just cut you off altogether i've talked to artists that know artists that have just been cut off because you know pokemon thought there was foul play they were charging people for pokemon commissions or whatever or something like that you, you can't be the artist's got to be so careful these days. These scumbags messaging them, getting signatures, and thinking that it's like, you know, harmless. Well, it's not harmless. These guys, they're out for themselves, and the artists are unaware. They should be more aware. They should be made more aware. But it's such a hush hush thing that it's like, you only, they, it's more of like, you know, the punishments are just dealt in secrecy, and no one really knows it's a thing. It's uh, really bad. But. What can we do? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what we can do, to be honest. But it just sucks, as I have a goal, not really a goal, a dream, to get, you know, Rusty drawn by all my favorite Pokemon artists, because, you know, Pokemon changed my life. I would love to give back to some artists that have made some beautiful artwork that has helped me be able to buy and sell and give me this kind of lifestyle that I have now. If this is even a lifestyle, if you can fucking call this a fucking lifestyle, what the hell? My knee is hurting. I'm sitting so much, my knee's hurting. My wrist's hurting, everything's hurting. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> I'm gonna need some more water, one sec. Oh, oh. Oh, man. I might remember to cut that in, out or leave it in. <clears throat> I don't know. But mm, I fi figured there's so much more sorting to go. I can't keep going. I don't want to destroy my throat because I still got heaps of other videos I want to record. So, yeah. The life of a content creator. But yeah, it's sad. I mean, I, want, I have this goal. All my favorite Pokemon artists, I would love to get a drawing of my pets. Immortalize them. Eventually put it all up on one wall. Be absolutely fantastic. It would look absolutely amazing in all their styles. Their styles are so distinct that it's just like, you look at it, you're like, hey, that's so-and-so, that's them, that's them. Like, my Kamiya drawing is just out of this world. You can tell it's Kamiya from 10 miles away. It's just like, you know, that's what I want. You know, my, my Kazuki drawing is amazing. My Sao Sao drawing is exactly like Sao Sao does everything. It's, it's crazy, so. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, man, my, my throat is... Gornski... Hmm. Hmm. Okay. No missed calls. Everything's fine. My life is uh still working, still revolving around. But oh well. Don't want to talk about that signature thing anymore because it's just cringe. People are being a bunch of losers. Um Did I mix any hollows in? I did. Yeah, I'm just manhandling these cars now. I'm not even trying. <clears throat> hmm. That's why I love this, like, played old back stuff. Is I can be a little bit more faster, a little bit more rough. It's not a big deal. I have to be so delicate, have everything sleeved. It's all slipping around everywhere all the time. It's slipping in and out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a... Yeah, it's nice. Okay. okay. Hello, cat. Can't jump on me. I'm sorry. We're in the lab right now. We're cooking. <clears throat> now, for people that are here, one hour, 54 minutes. I have a friend. His name is OK J Love. We're close friends. He's actually coming over next week to my house because there's a regionals in my city. 
next week. And uh, he, he wants to start something together. I don't know what he wants to start. Maybe he wants to do some collaborations. That'd be cool if I did collaboration with him. I mean, how much can I benefit from that? He's huge. He's a huge YouTuber. He's also really good at doing his videos. I actually learn a lot from what he's doing and asking him questions and everything like that. But uh, he's the one that inspired me to make the voiceover videos. He said, yeah, just do it. You know, put put one high quality thing out there and see how it went. Yeah, I did that because of him. And now look, insane. 200 bucks from that video, mate. Bloody hell. <laughs> but, you know, he wants to do some sort of collaboration. I'm not sure. He's, he mentioned podcast. I don't really like podcasts. Yeah, they're not. I don't know if the space needs another podcast, to be honest. But you got two diehard, you know, fans. Plus, like, he's really smart. I'm like... I can talk a lot. So that is that. I don't know. We'll see. We're pretty different as well. Like I'm, you know, blunt, harsh, say a few things that I probably shouldn't say. I probably said a few things that I never should have said. But, you know, we're all 17 once playing Call of Duty. So there's certain things that have been said that we can never take back. But it might be good. But it might just be a pipe dream. I don't want to like want it to look like I'm, you know, I'll do this with you because you're popular. It's more of be like, oh, I want to do it with you because you're my friend. And if I have another thing in my life that I actually enjoy, that would be great. You know, the more things that you can do your time with that you actually enjoy, and you can get a benefit out of it, so it's like a double. It'd be pretty good. I have so many rocket EVs. Dark Dragon, man. five of them, five, four, that five Dark Dragon Knights. Pretty, pretty good. People are wondering, these cards will take me years to list, but, oh my, but, now they're sorted, that's all that matters, they're sorted, it's literally the only thing that matters, so when I do want to list them, I can just go bang bang, pull out all the cards at the same time, bang bang, almost done, oh my god, I'm surprised these piles didn't like fall over while I was making that plush video, Oh man, what a stupid video. Why did I decide to make pancakes for the video to describe what's going on? Why did I just, why did I do that? That's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do when I made that video. That's like, I was like, I want to tell a story about how I lost my job, but I didn't know how to like make a video for it. So I'm just like, I'm just going to make pancakes. And while I was making the pancakes and doing the filming, I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? And it turned out great. <laughs> I don't know. You know, the, like the video, I was going to put it out without like the first part of me like saying job quitter pointing at me. It was just going to start off with the pancakes. I was like, okay, well I need to have a sort of like a, a thing. So it starts off with me eating pancakes. And then it kind of like, you know, I think that's a pretty cool thing to do to like, it sets people's eyes on fire or something. I don't know. I don't even know what that means, but like, it kind of piques people's interest or something. But <laughs> who knows? But the thing is, I don't have any more plans to make a video like that. You know, if something comes in my head, I will. I did have an idea, small idea. It hasn't come, there's nothing from it. But I would love to make a video where I talk about a story and then. I pay someone to animate the story. Like, I think that'd be really funny. So. That's it. And I don't know. I don't know. That's it. Would that be funny? I don't fucking know. But that'd be pretty funny. I find some animator on Fiverr. But, or maybe. Maybe I could like. Oh, actually, how do we... I could pay, like, five different animators to do it and mesh all their animations together just to see the differences. That'd be cool. Hey, that's an idea. See, look, I'm getting ideas. Just see that, see that happens in my brain. I'm just like, boom, boom. It's crazy. That would be really expensive. So maybe that's an idea for... I'm not sure what I'll talk about. There's I have a few funny, like, things that have happened to me over, like, my Pokemon selling. But other than that... I don't really have a really exciting life. Like I haven't been out partying. 
that many times. I haven't been drunk and around, walking around the streets, stumbling. There's no, like, funny thing. There's a few times I've, like, gone to buy collections that's been really sketchy and I felt like I was going to die. And um, maybe we have time for one of those stories now. <laughs> Should I say it? I don't know. I'm just going to expect that you're saying yes. Mm. Alright, two hours in, that water hits different. I swear to God. But, alright. This is a story that I probably tell the most. I don't know if I've ever said it before, but... 2017, 2018, it's when I started to get into modern cards. I kind of broke out of my old Mac only shell. Not old Mac, but like Wizards of the Coast English only shell. I would only sell those cards. I just thought that was the best. You know, that's the only reason I did it. I just thought it was the best. And no one could tell me otherwise. Because they're old cards. They have to be the best. And because they got so popular over the 20th anniversary, I thought I was unstoppable. But I, I had a few friends that dealt in modern. And they're like, hey, Steve, you can sell like modern playable cards for a lot. Or oh, this or that. And then I got into grading. All sort of stuff. So <laughs> I saw a collection come up on uh, Gumtree. Have I said this video? Have I said this before? I hope I haven't, because this is going to be the same. And whatever. Gumtree is a uh, website. It's kind of like Craigslist, but an Australian version of game Craigslist. It's called Gumtree. We have gum trees in Australia, so I don't know why they call it Gumtree. But it's just a type of tree. Anyway, tree. the tree isn't relevant to the story. We have... I saw this collection come up. It was a black and white collection. Oh, Kim just got home. Where was I? Sorry, Kim just got home. She said the movie was great. Um, so anyway, I saw this black and white collection on Gumtree. And I was like, wow, that's really great. It has a, he said he opened like 20 booster boxes. He even had the empty booster boxes there. It was something like out of this world. I was like, I've never seen so many black and white cards together. Even though black and white English was still pretty easy to get in 2018. It wasn't that old yet. It was like, you know, to see that many black and white boxes open, especially like the earlier on ones and Next Destinies and... All the kind of like expensive ones. He had two black and white Charizard secret rares. That's like the BW shiny. Anyway, so I found this collection. I messaged him. We came to a deal. It was like $1,000. And it was the most I've ever paid for a collection in person. I bought a few collections like over the years online for a little bit more. But that collection in particular was like, you know, it, it just is what it was. It is what it is. So. I drove there after work, where I worked for like nine hours or whatever. Drove there after work. I was tired as hell, but it is what it is. I, I have the, I had the, I've said it is, it is what it is like eight times, but uh, I had the desire to get this collection more than anything else. Just like I am sorting these cards right now, I have the desire to get the card sorted more than anything else. So it's all, it's all I want to do. So I'm driving, I'm driving. It was an hour and a half away, roughly, maybe an hour. I'm in my shitbox car whatever. Or did I have the 370Z then? I think I had the 370. Anyway, turn up to the street. There's cars everywhere. I was like, I've never seen so many cars in my life. Why so many cars on the street? I thought I was in like a bad part of town or something. But I find the guy's house address that he gave me. I park down the road. I walk there. There's music playing. I'm like, okay, there's music playing. This is kind of crazy. Why is there music playing at this house so loud at like, you know, 8 p.m.? It wasn't even that late. I was like, 8 p.m. There's music going crazy. It's like a party. It was a party. I walk in, like I walk, I walk up to the door, bang on the house a little bit, like, hey, what's going on? No one answers the door. Bang on the house again. No one answers the door. Bang on the house. Eventually, someone comes to the door because someone has me that banging on the door on the fly screen. The guy's like, oh, how's it going? Opens the door to like, let me in like I was there for the party. And I was like, uh, I'm here for whatever his name was. And he says, oh, it's, you know, Steve. The Pokemon guy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, me, me, Steve, the Pokemon guy, sure. <clears throat> and then, sorry, just drink a water real quick. And then he like, <laughs> lets me inside, brings me through the house. There's people everywhere that are standing there. That, you know, it's not a crazy dance rave party. It's just people enjoying themselves, drinking, laughing, having fun. Just a bunch of mates together. <clears throat> and then he, you know, he, as I walk in, he's like, hey, everybody, the Pokemon guy's here. 
And they all turn to me, stare at me, and you know, me as like 2017, 2018, I was I wasn't young. But I was 24 years old, just a scrawny guy. I'm not that tall, whatever, like, you know, five foot eight. I felt pretty like, you know, like pretty shut in. I wasn't as open as I was now. I wasn't as comfortable talking to as many people. More of a just a shut in kind of nerd, very skinny. And I shit myself. I thought I was gonna die that day. But <laughs> He goes, yeah, the Pokemon guy's here. And they go, yay, and all this other stuff. And they're all losing their mind. And they all, he he brings me this, like, this box. And it wasn't a box. It was a styrofoam box. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, like, broccoli boxes or, like, ways they transport meat. But it was a huge styrofoam box. And inside the box was all these binders, all these tins, all this everything filled with all these cards. And I was like, oh, my, why is this in a styrofoam box? He's like, yeah, it's the only box I had. And I feel like a lot of people have other boxes, but that that's fine. But it was just, I'm going through the collections. Like, oh, you think, you know, it's check it's all there. It's no big deal. Wow, $1,000. That's so much you offered me. Like other people offered me way less. You know, I've never really been someone to try and like lowball people like crazy to get a really good deal. I always want to just secure the cards because I'm addicted. But uh, yeah, it was just crazy. And they're all crowding around me like, oh, this is like, oh, you're like, I use that Pokemon cards too. And uh, all these other words and things that people say. And that was just probably like, you know, and I walk out, drive back home an hour and a bit, finally get home. I get to go through this collection, longest day ever. It's like 11 o'clock. I'm not working the next day, I'm pretty sure. I work all through the night, pulling the cards out, going crazy, you know, spending tens of hours going through this collection, all the hollows. And I'm like, oh my, the conditions on all this stuff was like perfect. Like this guy was like a god. All his cards like gem i graded there was a black and white secret rare ex execute which is a really hard card to find in good condition because it was super playable got a psa 10 execute i sold that for like 500 dollars because they, they were like really expensive back then they, i think that was like pop two or pop three when i first graded it no, i graded i graded like one of the first ones so yeah that that was a crazy story I mean, that was, that was a crazy time. Both Charizards graded 10s. I sold those for like 400, 500 each. I mean, to even think now, I think those are like four or 5,000, but it is what it is. <laughs> I wouldn't have been where I am now if I didn't sell all the stuff that I sold. But uh, yeah, I mean, that that was honestly... That, that was crazy, right? Like that was... that I can't even believe my... Like when I even think about that, I went to his house... Three cards cover the cost of the whole collection. Sold the rest raw, a bunch of full art trainers, everything like that. It, it was just, you know, not heaps of money, but, you know, even doubling your money back then on $1,000. Like, I honestly will say, like, doubling $1,000 back then feels the same as doubling 10000 now. Like, I can't even explain that. Honestly, it might even be easier to double 10,000 now than it was to double 1,000 back then. Well, not even double, but it might even be easier to get $20,000 when you have 10,000 now compared to getting 2,000 when you had 1,000 back then. Like, things did not sell fast. You had to put lots of grind time effort in. Like, it was... But I wouldn't change it for the world. I hope that we can get to something similar where everything's a little bit cheaper. And, um, you know, th um, sales still roll. I mean, I hope I don't like the, like the liquidity goes down or people stop buying as much, but I do hope prices go down on a lot of stuff. Even my own stuff. I don't really care. I'll take the hit. It's not a big deal. I want to get more. I want to get more of this. I want to get more like EV alt arts. I want to get more everything. I, I want to get more, all these other things that I have. I want to get more trophies. I want to get more snap cards. Bloody Charmander selling for 68,000 US. Squirtle and Bulbasaur almost the same. Like, why? Why? I want to get a set of all three snap cards, but I can't do that. That's way too much. That's a lot of singles. With the way my brain works and how, like, I don't think I'm at the best, like, getting the absolute most money out of every opportunity. So I think I'm kind of capped on, like, like, yeah, I've built myself up to this far, but I don't think I can get, like, up to some of these people i can't like get to illustrator level it's just the way my brain is and the way i work i love doing this but this is not like illustrator level work 
I need to be thinking like way bigger picture, taking way more risk, grading an exceptional amount more cards, finding more avenues to sell. You know, that's when you get into like mass selling, like sealed product and hoarding and all this other stuff. And like you need a lot of money, you need a big team. Now that's a little bit too much stress, maybe too much work. And I don't really want to enjoy that. Plus, I don't really want an illustrator, but like, you know what I mean? I, can't, I don't think I'll be, I can't get to illustrator level. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm happy. I'm happy how I am. But, uh, you know, that's what I think it would take to get there. Just the way I, you know, no one, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's the thing I said before, even if like YouTube blows up, you get 600,000 views and you only get like two that, was that two thousand, two thousand dollars or something? Yeah. I don't know if that's a, maybe if the video is longer, I don't know, but it's not a desire of mine personally. And I think that's fine. I know what is within my limitations and my capabilities, and I'm happy to go for that. So, yeah, I know we're a little bit farther in. I said I was going to get everything done, but unfortunately for you guys, Kimberly just got home. So I want to go spend some time with her because she's been out all night, and that's important. We're going to watch some new girl, make some dinner. Stuff's important too. Spend time with people you love. It's not always about work. You never know. You could always make more money, but you can't always get some time back with the people that you love. Trust me. What's the time? 10.30. I guess it wasn't that late when I first started this, but Jesus, my throat hurts. Kim's going to be happy. I'll be shutting up for a while. <laughs> oh, my Lord. My, what do people... I wonder what people think. They're like, oh, Steve's got another video up. Oh, my... It's two hours. It's two... Is this guy human? Is he a different breed? What is he even talking about for two hours? I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I don't know. All I know is my shoulders are sore. My shoulders are sore. I have nothing left to say. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe a podcast would be good for me. Because then I would be able to talk nonstop. Is there any more guide videos I need to make? Like, I'm pretty happy with most of my guides. I'll probably re-release some of them over time as I learn how to, like, make better video edits. I do want to talk a little bit about, like, international buying and selling tips. That's a video I want to make. Like, I want to, like, you know, how to transfer money safely, like, what to use, what to look out for, stuff like that. You know, international buying and selling tips. That's one I'll have on my calendar. Have that written down somewhere. What am I doing? Other than that, I don't, there's nothing too much more on my radar. Just more videos like this probably over the next month. Sorting videos, me talking about stuff, Ask Steve, Mail Days. But, you know, I, no more PSA returns for a few months. Maybe I got to do some more PSA submission videos. Stuff like that. Yeah, well, I will figure out something. Maybe some more uh, voiceover edits. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, that's the last card for today. Uh, if you stay for the whole thing, you're actually insane. Like, honestly, there is something wrong with you. But hopefully you learn something. And then maybe you learn something so much that you think to yourself, there is something wrong with that Steve guy. Until next time. Um... My name's Steve. I'm extremely tired and sore. It's really sweaty in here. And I hope I turned the microphone on before I started the video. Have a great night. Oh. Oh.